Hatch for joining us and welcome to the penultimate round of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series 2023 2024. You're joining us here in our virtual commentary box. I'm Giles Cosgrove. She's Jess Ball and he is James Monty Montgomery. And man alive, do we have an exciting evening of racing ahead tonight. We're going night racing at Kyalami with GT3s. We're going to get into that because the cat is amongst the pigeons. It's a Schrodinger's cat of strategy. So do stick around for that because we're going to get into it very, very shortly. We've also got to recap what happened last month because it's all changed Evercrease Junction. So do stand by for that. We'll be bringing you what happened there in just a moment. But also got to say, we're a couple of months away, only less than 100 days now until we go back to Silverstone for Formula Student UK 2024. As you can tell, we're all very excited about it here in the commentary box, and you can be there too. Spectator tickets are available right now. They're a damn sight cheaper than what it would cost to go to the Grand Prix. I should know I'm doing both, and it's about 10% of the ticket price for the Grand Prix to go to Formula Student, and you get way more access. You get paddock access. You get a fantastic view of Cops Corner. It's well worth coming, and for one night only, if you've got a ticket tonight for spectating at formula student uk 2024 you can join us live on the stream if you've got someone who is part of the formula student server and you've got a ticket send us proof on discord the formula student discord server send us proof and the first person to send us that can join us on the stream it's not a good prize but it's the best we've got we've got no money anyway beyond that we had a massively exciting race last month and Suffice to say, the results that you saw are not the results now. So, Monty, would you care to explain, please? Sure. Um, okay, so good evening, everyone. And uh, I can't believe it's been another month since uh, our last race. But, uh, yeah, a lot has happened on the track and even more happened off the track thereafter. So we left the race with uh, the scores looking like this. Bolton had won, Glasgow second, Cardiff third, with Southampton down in fourth. Bolton had uh, used their joker, so they had to win basically to stay competitive and in the top of uh, and keep their championship hopes alive. Which did, if I can find it. No, I can't because I've got the wrong thing open, but never mind. This was the provisional results. Bolton won from Glasgow and Cardiff. After the race, I received 15 penalties to go through for a plethora of incidents which were caught uh, off camera, I should say. And so we had to go and do a lot of reviewing afterwards. This was with regards to uh, exceeding track limits on multiple occasions, straight lining uh, chicanes, uh, as well as a lot of questionable overtakes and um, moving under braking type situations as well. I've never had to look at 15 protests before after a race, but it certainly was worth looking into and it had a huge change on the end results as we ended up having to dish out some fairly hefty penalties. Bolton, Glasgow and Southampton were all involved in this as well and they got a huge ton of penalties. So actually... Once we apply them all, let's swap the window. This is what race five looked like in the end. Cardiff ended up winning it from Bath, from Southampton, from Dublin, Bolton, Salford, Munster, and Glasgow all the way down in eighth. This had a huge impact on the championship standings. Ironically, congratulations to Cardiff for not only winning their first ever Formula Student Sim Racing uh, round overall since joining us uh, last season, um, but they are also the first team to have achieved an overall round victory without actually winning either of those races. <laughs> but never mind, a win is a win. And so they won from Bath and Southampton in third. And this has really changed the dynamics of the standings now because as you can see, guys, what was actually... 10 points between Southampton, Bolton and Glasgow. Southampton have now leaped ahead and they go into this round with a, almost a 40 point cushion of a Bolton and Glasgow. And this really does change the dynamic of the uh well the, the next two rounds as far as I'm concerned because um well 
Southampton don't really need to do anything now, do they? They can just go and coast home. They don't need to take any risks. They don't need to do any unnecessary gambles. They've got one hand on the trophy, right? Yeah, well, this is the thing, isn't it? Jess, there's some interesting strategy going on tonight. Would you be able to explain? Well, there is quite a few strategies going on tonight as well. Of course, we're at Kailami racing the GT3s. And they had a few choices of cars. So most people, unsurprisingly, have gone for the McLaren. It is the fastest car out of the choice that the universities have chosen today. 139s, 140s is where we were expecting lap time as well. However, there's a small caveat to that. It has the smallest fuel tank. So we're expecting one stop for fuel for any universities that opted for the McLaren. Why have we brought up Southampton in this? Because they've opted for Nissan GTR, which is approximately two seconds a lap slower on the practice servers. They have done the bare minimum online. So I assume they've done most of their practice offline. So if this is the genuine pace of this car, then it could be a potential good strategy call because they have the largest fuel tank and the best chance they do not have to pit, saving about 25 to 30 seconds. And if this is genuine pace, they also risk starting further down at the back of the grid. They have to do a lot of overtaking and avoid a lot of incident. There was a worry that they may be in the bottom server, but Monty, there's another cut caveat to this, isn't it? Yep, you're right, Jess. So the other caveat tonight, guys, is uh, as we are approaching exam season, we've had our lowest entry number of the season uh, of just 26 teams tonight. So in the interests of, uh, well, rather than having a field of 20 and a field of six in the lower server, we're going to bring everyone into one single server tonight. So more Ooh. cars for us to view tonight, more action, Let the fun more thrills, begin. And perhaps for some of the teams, our first chance to see them this season because they may have not had a chance again to the top server yet. I'm looking forward to this. I'm massively excited about this. We're, this is the penultimate round. Before we go into the grand final in July, the Tuesday of the week of FS UK, we will be going to the hallowed ground that is Williams Esports HQ. We cannot wait to be there but who is going to be going into that final in the lead that's what we're finding out tonight and as jess has been saying southampton they've got a hefty lead but they're totally gambling it and i can't make head nor tail of the logic behind that i've sat with monty we've been going through it before we came on the stream tonight they've put in on the actual server a grand total of five percent of the average usual laps in practice they've done 30 compared to 600, which is not like Southampton. We also know that Bolton and Glasgow are adamantly coming at the team. They have they they're turning around and saying, "Right, elbows out, we're out of this." And Southampton themselves, they were quite strategic in the placement of their, shall we say, complaints last round. They didn't exactly make themselves any friends. So you've got three teams here who are absolutely desperate to win. Will not give each other an inch. And yet, Southampton seemingly have decided to kind of go big or go home. At the last moment, their actual car choice came in minutes before the deadline, which is completely unlike them as well. And Jess, I can't, I really don't understand where the logic is in this choice from Southampton. It may come off. They may be able to manage to do an Oxford last round out if you weren't here. Oxford did try to go long without a pit stop. It failed spectacularly on the last lap. Every car came past them. They could logically get away with it because that Nissan's got that larger fuel tank. So were they essentially saying, we don't think we can beat them wheel to wheel, but on strategy, we reckon we can. But even then, it feels like a massive gamble. It could be a massive gamble because if, if someone is doing a zero stop or someone's doing a one stop, the freshest tires and fuel potentially could have more of an advantage than if you pit and uh, you gain about 20 to 30 seconds because they even though they're going to be able to do some overtakes the likes of bolton and glasgow they're going to be on the fresher tires so they're possibly going to be able to breeze past them but you never know southampton might have put done some offline practice and realized that that was the better tire for them and they're maybe just going for a bit conservative at the moment but 
It is not just this one, the final round. It's going to be busy at Williams Esports. It's not just one one race. There's multiple different races that we've got and they have to adapt to everything. And if they if they don't go into the finals in in in, in, in towards the end of the day on, on that Tuesday, then that's lots of points lost and potentially that could be championship lost for Southampton. They are significantly ahead. It feels like to me. I could I could a 40 points or so feels like a significant lead. And yet to be making this decision this late in the game. It's brave, certainly. They're gonna, without doing a pit stop, they will make up between twenty and thirty seconds. That's guaranteed. But as you've been saying, Jess, when the when the other teams are on fresh rubber, and we know teams like Bolton and Glasgow can do a meatloaf and go like a bat out of hell, it just begs the question: Is that twenty to thirty seconds going to be enough? We're minutes away from finding out. Will we be able to bring you live coverage of these two races tonight? So make sure you stick where you are. Grab your popcorn, grab your snacks, turn it up. We're going night racing at Kyalami. Uh, we haven't done a night race this season. Very excited for that first race. A little bit behind schedule, I think, but we should be able to bring you that very soon. We'll have interviews with the winner of race one thereafter. We'll also be talking to potentially any spectators who are coming to FS. Do let us know. Um, and then we've got race two on the way for you. One server tonight, as we've been saying. So every single team racing tonight will be in vision, will be on your screens. So make sure you're cheering on. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting. Got to give a big shout out to Wendy. Absolutely love Wendy Cohen. Brilliant spectator. She is also Neb's mum from UGR. Um, we've got people supporting Hertfordshire. Go on, Cedric. Adam Cedric says Ashton Smith. Will Davies is supporting X Racing, or as I like to refer to them, Team Minty. Um, elsewhere, we've <laughs> also got Thomas Johnson saying, here for hearts, give them hell, Alonjo and Cedric. Jeremy Burt says X Racing on top. Wendy, obviously supporting UGR, as is Terry Wu. Tilly says she's supporting X Racing from Hampshire, a county where everyone is called Minty, I'm led to believe. Meanwhile, on your screens now, you can see it there it's absolutely fantastic it is gt3s in the dark at kyle army now you are a regular sim racer jess what do the teams need to be doing different on a night race in a night race the visibility is going to be a lot different the track temperature is going to be a lot cooler as well so the tires they're going to have to have a lot of heat into them it's not like during the day where you're going to be having a lot of warmer tire temperature so it's easier to heat the tires as well and well, you, you, you've got to be learning the braking references a lot in advance. You've got to think about what you do in the dry. No, not in the dry, in the daytime and translate that into the nighttime because it, it, because you could have shadows, which are not necessarily in the day and the night, which can help you a little bit as well. It is very interesting. They've got to be aware of the drivers around them. Of course, they've got the lights as well. Turn one Crowthorn is going to be quite an interesting feat we've got uh, also um the barbecue ben which i do love by the way sunset one of my favorite corners as we they go up hill, the hill as well you've got the hairpin of clubhouse bend as well you've got the famous s's you can't have a circuit without the famous s's and you could you could just see it's harder for the drivers just to gauge where, 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 where they want to be and with the drivers in front of them it's just, it's just going to be hard to get your braking references at times, but it's something that the drivers have got to get used to. Personally, I haven't done any night races at all. I'm mainly used to day races because on my sims, there's only day races and that's it. But it's mainly the braking references and the awareness of the drivers around them. It's going to be completely different to what you're seeing in the, in, in the daytime. Um, we, there is no denying this is sim racing as well. So naturally, they've got the addition of you know artificial light they're not actually in the cars so potentially that may make things a fair bit easier compared to what it would be like if you were actually driving in these conditions at Kyle Army. yes indeed and it is one of my favorite circuits um of, of the entire calendar i kind of wish it was back on the f1 calendar the last time i was on the f1 calendar was 1993. it was built this circuit in 1961 hosted 18 rounds of the F1 World Championship. It's hosted GT3 uh, races still today. Circuit layout was changing around about 1988 with only half the original layout that we've got today. The second version was active for a little bit and then the revised layout that we got today includes a new pit building which was constructed in 1991 and then it's been hosting races um, of the World Superbikes as well since 2018. 
10. Here's a great two race track, which is why they don't host Formula One back in the day, which is which is a, a bit of a shame. But it's been around for 54 years and it's one of my favorite circuits um, on generally in, in, in racing in general. Very excited to be going racing here imminently, imminently. Uh, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled. Do not leave this stream. Um, got to give some shout out. Seb is back in the chat and he has promised to behave this evening, which we're all the more happy for. So thank you very much to Seb elsewhere. I own that. I'm so sorry, I own that. I can't pronounce that second one. But Queen Mary on the way to Williams F1. Uh, yes. Got, talking, talking of Queen Mary, was it Queen? There's, what, there was a, um, one of the Irish teams. One of their alumni is now um, a reporter for Formula One. And Queen's they Belfast. did a VC with her. It's Queen's Belfast. We got a shout out on the Formula One coverage at Sky Sports. Thank you very much. Love that. I think that was at Saudi. Was, I think it was at Saudi and Australia as well. I was watching the broadcast and I was like, hey, that's the Formula Student car. It, it, it's just great that they're getting oh. this attention. And it just goes to show that if you do take part in Formula Student, it is an engineering competition. If you do take part in Formula Student, that is a huge stepping stone to be an engineer in a, in a real life Formula One race team or even a single seater race team. So the person Absolutely. that was was uh, Bernie Collins, a alumni from uh, Queen's Belfast. So she went back to her old hunting ground to kind of show uh, she, she's what, a what good that pundit journey. as well. Exactly, very she's good pundit class. on Sky F1. And so she went back to her old uh, hunting grounds to show, oh, this is what you kind of need to do to live this life. So it was fantastic to an honour to be part of uh, that um, that I coverage mean, actually and to be included in there but yeah it, it hopefully gives inspiration to many many people as to what they can do and how close they are to being able to get that dream job working in F1 also great uh, coverage for uh, women in STEM as well definitely exactly. and I must say the Queen's Belfast sim looks absolutely gorgeous very very envious of that Oddly enough, um, Bernie Collins was on the 2016 Forbes 30 under 30 list for manufacturing and industry. Nice. I mean, just clearly destined for great things and an absolutely fantastic pundit as well. I'm afraid to say that you don't have Bernie Collins uh, doing the punditry for you tonight. Instead, you've got us three because we're <laughs> cheaper. Anyway, we're going to go racing tonight at Kyle Army very, very shortly. We'll be able to bring you the lineup on the grid. And I think this is going to be a real insight into as to how much sandbagging has been going on with Southampton. Let's play, That's uh, what I want to know. Yes. This grid is going to be a big telltale sign yep. of that. Let's play a game of spot the difference, shall we, guys? Let's run through the grid. Let's do it now, please, sir. So here we go on pole. Oh, Wendy's going to love this. It's UGR, and they are with Khan in first position. Hull 18. That's unusual to see them this high up this series. Brilliant stuff from Hull A. They are in second place. University College Dublin are in third. Southampton are in fourth, which is a, a really good result given that their car is notably slower. So we've qualified on fourth. That's wing, brilliant. That, wing, that wing is, you could do a barbecue on that wing. Wow. That's uh, not meanwhile, a wing, that's fifth, a barn door. Right, there you go. You are in Jersey, aren't you, Monty? <laughs> Meanwhile, in fifth, it is Cardiff wow. and Aaron Farmer. Bolton down in sixth. In seventh, it is Bath. In eighth, it is Vigo. In ninth, we've been talking about them, Queens, Belfast. In uh, tenth, meanwhile, you've got, uh, is that Birmingham there, UBR? It is Birmingham. Uh, I think that's their season best qualification. Wonderful stuff. Victoria are in 11th. Aberdeen McScottish coming in 12th. Not quite, Oxford not Uni quite. It's a McScottish teammate, Eldon. We're going to see McScottish in the second race, Giles. There we are then. Meanwhile, in 13th, we've got Oxford University. Polytechnic are in 14th. University of Strathclyde are in 15th. The NTU are there in 16th. Staffordshire in 17th. Hertfordshire in 18th. The month that University are in 19th. Manchester in 20th. Alex Pritchard and Exeter are in 21st. York A is in 22nd. And FSTN are rounding out your grid. Oh, and maybe not. We've got more. We have got more. I was going to say, I thought we had a few more. Yes. FSTN are in 23rd. University of Wales Trinity St. David in 24th. MTU in 25th. And at the back of the grid, it is Queen Mary Formula Student Car on the position 26 we've got 26 cars 
We're going to go racing in the dark here at Kyalami. Uh, none of us particularly used to this sort of racing. Uh, so we'll, it's an adventure for all of us, I think. And it certainly is going to be an adventure for the top three teams. Glasgow, Southampton and Bolton. Those are the teams you need to keep your eyes on this evening. So make sure you're watching. Glasgow on pole. Hull A up there in second, surprisingly. College Dublin also coming in with what must be their best result in qualifying this season, surely. Southampton, they're in fourth. Yep. In a so car which is, is that... two seconds a lap slower. What's going I mean, on? I really can't predict who's going to win this. The I, other I, thing... I, I, I... Sorry, Giles, I've just realised the no, other thing we've not even discussed. Apart from, the champion... apart from the championship protagonists... Exactly, Jess. Apart from the championship protagonists, no one else has really used their jokers so far the second half of the season. So um, basically anyone who's not the top three that we're used to seeing are running lighter cars tonight. This should be interesting. This could really put the cat amongst the pigeons. As far as I'm concerned, I'm calling this race tonight Schrodinger's win. I've got no idea how this is going to go. I don't think Jess and Monty do either. Have you got predictions? Get them in quickly now. We've got lights coming up, going racing in the dark at Kailami for the first round of tonight's racing. It is going to be six lights in the dark. Kyle Army, Formula Student Sim Racing 2023 2024, penultimate round, and they're away. Glasgow got a great start, and plenty of people squabbling for positions off the line. A whole field of McLarens jostling for positions. A single Nissan to keep your eyes out for. That is Southampton in fourth, and Hull A are down, and Southampton are up into second. It's three way duel, but that is very tight through here. You can barely make it out in amongst the dark. Of Kyle Army, Glasgow holding on to that position, getting away well. Hull A back into second. Southampton dropping away. There's been contact there for the race winners, I think. Race winners, sorry, championship leaders is what I meant. University College Dublin holding on to South Southampton have gone past College Dublin. They've got away very nicely. Held on to that fourth position, made a move there. They are under a lot of pressure now from Boston and College Dublin. Fourth place is Bolson now. Southampton already into the top three with that notably slower car. There is Oxford University going past University College Dublin. College Dublin dropping down the running order, having qualified in third. Bath going past them now. What's happened to the Irish? Not much luck, apparently. No, not much at all. I have to say, fair play to Oxford for having a very good start off the line and gained quite a few places already. Birmingham's not had a good start. Neither has Cardiff and... USM, there's quite a few people dropping through the order as they go down the hill. A few people going off the track, and, and as I was saying earlier, Giles, it's hard to figure out the runoff around this track, and sometimes they miss their breaking point. So it's who's put the most practice as Bath's had a bit of an off, but they've made contact, Giles. Oh, dearie me, that's gone very badly for the team from the south as they fall down away to 16th and dropping away as well. Queen's Belfast dropping well, well down the running order. They are off in the grass and they're facing the wrong way. College Dublin also down. What's occurred there then? Going through then, having completed, I believe that must be the first lap completed. It took a while, especially here in the dark. Not as fast as I was expecting, given their GT3s. The University of Wales, Trinity St. David, holding on to 11th. Under pressure from DMU behind them. To Montfort University on the attack. They've gone through past Manchester. They've now got the University of Wales, Trinity St. David in their sights. They'll be aiming for a top 10 position, no doubt. The Montfort, very exciting out on track at the in person, the physical. Scott interrupts there UK. quickly, Giles. QWTST have seemed to have not worked out how to turn on their lights. This makes their drive even more magnificent. They're driving in the blind and have already made up 10 places after the first lap. That is absolutely wonderful. They're driving by the glow of their brake lights under pressure from the Mott The Mott then have got a real issue here because they can barely see the car ahead unless they keep them in their headlights. But in order to get round them, they've got to move off of the team that they're trying to get past. Is this a cheeky strategy to avoid people try overtaking them? Well, it hasn't worked because the mop that go through on University of Wales, Trinity St. David, who might need someone to come and point where the button is for the lights. 
Yeah, usually if it's real life, uh, Giles, then they would get told off for not having their lights on. I know I've commented on that ACC race in the night around Spa, and they actually got a penalty for that as well. And it is quite dangerous to be in that position without the headlights because you're able to see them as well. So it's probably a thing that they forgot. And I know if you forget to do that in iRacing or ACC, you automatically get disqualified anyway. Glasgow still leading by five tenths. Over whole hole, I was not expecting up to be up there in second. They're having a deep. <coughs> Excuse me, carry on, Giles. Uh, Glasgow then in the lead, as Jess is saying, opening that lead out on hull A, heading towards a second gap, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 at the moment. Southampton, three seconds behind them. We were expecting this. We were expecting them to be behind. But the question was always going to be, where were they going to qualify? They've qualified exactly where they needed to be to make the strategy we're predicting they're going to pull to pay off. And if they can go long throughout this entire race, they've got to be very conservative with their fuel use. But if they can do this, then chances are they are going to have the overrun on Glasgow and Hull, who are going to have to come in for fuel if they keep lapping at this pace. Meanwhile, the Vigo under pressure from Demotford. Demotford on the charge. University of Trinity St. David in the mix as well. Bath down there in 14th. Some of these teams not running with their lights on is already difficult enough. And um, I've got to question, the, as Jess was saying, University of Wales Trinity St. David driving with their lights off, it makes it both difficult for them and more difficult for everybody else. And there is exactly why Bath kicking into the back. That's, that's, da that's dangerous, David. Giles. That's really dangerous. I I'm sure they realise that that's going to cause so much issues. And I'm sure there might be people thinking that they could protest that uh, after the race as well. Because oh, going, you can see right people there. going off. That's, that's Vigo off in it's the background. And uh, that's a familiar face that uh, it's great to see in the, top, in the top server again. Absolutely thrilled to have them back. Vigo there in 11 from Spain. Took a very interesting route round that corner there. Aberdeen not having a lot of luck there. Clear, by the looks of things, they've gone off. Meanwhile, UCD and Exeter are dropping well down the running order, battling out between each other at the back in 24th and 25th, respectively. Or is that 26th as well? UCD, NTU and Exeter all vying for, well, what they don't want is last spot. So they're going at each other. But I do like the livery there. Is that a Union Jack on the side of the NTU car? Really liking that. That looks gorgeous. Uh, it, well, as much as you can see in the dark here at Kyalami. Six minutes gone. 19 minutes of racing left to go here in the first race of the penultimate round of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series. Bath had been overtaken by University of Wales, Trinity St. David. Bath not having a great time of it tonight, but they are not not content with letting Trinity Bob St. David back, the outside. There's a blood tap. They don't know where they are. Trinity St. David have got the racing line, but they've also got the additional advantage of the fact their competitors cannot see where they are. You can see it here coming through. There are two cars in your frame there, but it looks like it's only one. Yeah, and, that, and that's the hard thing as well. Is there could be a situation where you don't know there's a driver around you, and then it's suddenly going to be too wide. Is this going to be a dotting oh. bomb on the left-hand side? Isn't he going to make it stiff, goes Bart? It's going to be tough. They're still going to go wheel to wheel, maybe almost going off the track. I think Trinity just said David is going to say, I want to get past you ASAP. Yeah. Probably go down the inside. But said, you know, he's going to switch back to the right. And if I was got... Bath, I would just be putting my foot down at this point just to get away yeah. from them because the absolute stress of having an unmarked car lurching out of the darkness into your mirrors is going to affect your driving. I want to bring Monty in on this because he is event captain. Your thoughts, Monty, on the fact that Trinity St. David seem quite content with running without their lights. What are your thoughts, please? I'm going to be completely honest. It's something we've never, ever had to talk about in the rules before because I didn't think we'd have anyone stupid enough or brave enough to give this one a shot. But uh, if it was going to be anyone that was going to give it a try, it had to be another James. So uh, fair play, James from uh, UWTSD. Oh, there we are. And uh, that's Cardiff making their way through as well. Um, Cardiff the went down to 22nd. They were in 5th and they've come down, went down the running order were in 22nd. It's a great recovery drive for Aaron Farmer up into 12th now. He's made up 10 positions in eight minutes. So the question is how many more positions can he get up in 17 minutes left of racing here in the first race? I'm not entirely sure. Monty, the line between stupidity and bravery is incredibly thin. What side have Trinity St. David come down on? 
I would say for the first lap, sheer genius, because they managed to make up about 12 to 13 positions by no one seeing them uh, overtaking them, but now they're beginning to pull back down near the field because they can't actually see where they're going. So it's uh, it started off genius, but we're heading back towards the other side of the line now. We're knocking on the door of having had 10 minutes of racing here, and a lot of these drivers really are pushing it in the dark here at Kyalami. It does beg the question, at what point are they going to have to come in for a top of the fuel? Because you cannot do a full 25 minutes of racing in the no. McLaren at race pace without a fuel stop. When is that fuel stop going to come? Because Southampton will be sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for Hull and UGR to pit. You're on board with MTU at the moment as they hunt down the Spaniards of Vittoria. Not Vittoria. No, is Vittoria in Spain? I know Vigo is. Geography, never my strong suit, as proven many times in this series so far. You can see the complete lack of visibility. Oh, MTU! To with. And this is an absolutely bold move from De Montfort University. This is the exciting sort of driving we expect from De Montfort as they get through on MTU. MTU not having any of it, biting back, balls to the wall, elbows out, excellent racing from the pair of them. And DMU go through in seventh mtu now under pressure from queen mary there's a whole heap of traffic piling on down in the shadows you've been on board with the drivers you can see how difficult this circuit is at this pace with that little light yeah and it's a, 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 an interesting fact about this circuit in terms of the timings as well because we were the drivers were given the timings before um the, ne the next three routes it, at two it's around about one o'clock in the morning that that is, that is probably one of the hardest conditions in the nighttime ever imagine if it was raining and it was dark it probably would have been even more difficult but luckily we weren't that mean we decided to give it clear because otherwise we wouldn't have got any racing so but by the, the way rain. i love i do love the delivery from uh, glasgow it's kind of like Braun-esque, I would say, um, Jensen Button-esque, and Jensen Button's my favourite driver. So I, 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 li I like Glasgow's livery up in front. What I must say, though, Hull don't like having Glasgow up in front, and they have rapidly closed the gap on Khan. Hull A hunting down Glasgow with a gap down to 0.3 seconds. It was up to 0.7 a couple of laps in. From, uh, Hull A pulling off a sterling drive and they are piling on the pressure of one of the teams we're anticipating will be going in with a chance of winning the championship. They won the championship last year. They are defenders this year, and they are now under pressure from Hull A, a team that we haven't seen this close and personal to the top contenders all season. This is a real turnout for the books that none of us were expecting. Hull A, unwilling to let go of that massive rear spoiler on the back of the McLaren of Glasgow, almost like they're surfing off the back it's just close enough to let the driver in Glasgow's car know Ooh. you've got company and it gets very close there breaking late Wahal piling on the pressure lurching out of the shadows that's going to be a really frightening moment in your rear view mirror all of a sudden the headlights of a car less than a meter behind you lurching through the corners You've got to be really careful here to make sure that their braking is very obvious their racing line is very obvious to ensure there is no collisions both drivers doing an excellent job of keeping it clean and precise as well as competitive glasgow now on the approach to traffic you will have just seen it come out of your screens at the top there so glasgow on the approach to traffic this will slow them down and they've got hull only 0.3 seconds behind them that is not a lot and Carl have kept it consistent. They're not going away anytime soon. So as a result, could this mean we are about to see Hull Oh, a he's going to go for it. Take the lead of the race and he's going for it down the inside. This is very close indeed. Can they make it work? No. Glasgow got the racing line and Hull went for a late lunge. They're going for another one there, but they can't make it round either. This is absolutely fantastic from Hull and Glasgow. An absolutely unexpected battle here at Kyle Army for the race win. This is what we go racing for and we've got teams in the pits. MTU is in the pit as well as USM as well. They want to get their first stops out of the way. Halfway into this race, we've got DMU having a fight with Oxford and they got the move done when they needed to right now. This is one of the long straights you're going to see right now as there's still a four tenth gap between Glasgow and Hull. They're probably going to be thinking what the drivers are doing and we've got... Three cars in the mix at the moment. I'm not sure if it's a lapped car or is it Southampton I think catching up traffic. to them? 
Southampton are eight seconds behind. Joe, oh, right, it's a lap car, behind. probably. It's a lap car. Hull. Hull went back a bit after that failed attempt to get past. They've made up the ground now. They're back to that 0.3 second gap. So the car in the lead, Glasgow, you're on board with Hull now, looking for a way round. The team from Glasgow, nothing yielding just yet, waiting for that perfect moment to strike, to pounce on the race lead. Glasgow going away there, getting a better exit out of that corner, and oh! Oh, he's there, there in, Hull's Hull. in! An unexpected choice then from Hull. Hull go in. Now, I thought Glasgow would go in, but oh, A word, the chasing pack. They didn't want to get into the traffic and they no, want to get some sense. clear air, so they're, so they're the in right as well. Call. This is the right call to be making. Hull A going to come out on fresher tyres. They can put the hammer down. Glasgow have still got to contend with having to come out in traffic and also at that pit stop. I think and Hull the made the right call here. I think the undercut's the way to go. I also happen to think that Southampton have shot themselves in the foot. They were only ever going. Having said that, there's an eight second gap between Glasgow and Southampton who are now in second. We predicted earlier on there'd be a 20 to 30 second deficit if you pitted over not pitting. Southampton could still come good with this incredibly ballsy strategy. This is absolutely riveting. We've got an update from Monty Giles. Hello, Giles. Hello, Jess. Right, so just having a look at that pit stop there. So uh, one of the things we've noted is that it costs an extra 12 seconds to uh, change the tyres in the pit. So I'm not convinced that hole actually went for fresh tyres. I've got a feeling they went for the fresh air to get some hot laps in, which if that's the case has backfired because they come out right behind Bath. And they're fighting with them now. They're fighting with them now. So I wonder if it's coming back to bite them but it hasn't because they got past them asap anyway they They're still got gonna hold them up jess they've got they are gonna hold them up go. yeah and at the moment the difference between hull and glasgow is 32 seconds so they're still even if you had a, a, a poor pit stop of 30 seconds in length that's still two seconds left to make up i don't think it's going to happen i was no, all I don't think so. going in then i thought that was a great idea from hull Vigo going off there not quite able to hold the racing line and as a result oxford pulling away from them but Vigo having a really interesting time of it what is going on there i wonder well wide a few places are the team from spain up ahead of cardiff and queen mary cardiff excellent recovery by aaron farmer from 22nd up to sixth one place off where they qualified nine minutes of racing to go Khan for glasgow still on the attack doesn't seem to have any interest in pitting an interesting attempt then because logically they ought to pit and now would seem to be the time southampton uh, 10 seconds now behind glasgow the gap opening up calm putting the hammer down hoping to build up that buffer so that they, when they do pit they will still come out ahead of southampton who you can see now they've got a larger fuel tank they don't have to pit here and they'll be betting on Glasgow, needing to pit, having to put in fuel. They'll get past, and then it really will be a question of who's got the bravest right foot. Glasgow's got to pit now, because otherwise they're not going to have the gap needed to get past Southampton. They should have potentially pitted where Hull did, and they would have tried and get past them anyway. But Hull is struggling yeah, to try and yeah. close into Green Mary and Cardiff, so maybe Glasgow staying out might have benefited them and waiting for traffic. And we're seeing, I've seen something similar to what we saw in, or what I saw in Mazzano in Formula E today because they were running Formula E for the first time. You see a lot of people going wide near the curb just to gain a bit of time. Now, they were a bit hot on track limit, but not, not by much. But that, that is where we're starting to see if you're near that, if you're near that curb, you want to gain as much advantage as you can through those track limits. On board with Vigo, they've had a very squirmy car throughout this race going well wide off the racing line at some points. They're hunting down Oxford University. Oxford University taking a lead out of Vigo's book, and that was very nearly a collision. That was very close indeed. Did they make contact? I couldn't quite make it out. But Vigo are desperate to try and get past Oxford University. Looking to the inside here on this left-hander. Can they make it work? I'm fairly certain they can. Cardiff on the approach and Vigo get past Oxford University barely. They're almost side by side and Vigo have just made it up into fourth place. Oxford University now in the sights of Cardiff who are only a second behind and that's gonna tumble away very, very quickly. Meanwhile, Queen Mary are exiting the pits now, coming out of the pits of Queen Mary. 
they've done fairly well considering where they started. Uh, meanwhile, on the way down the running order, Staffordshire, there's a lot going on there. Bath are in the pits. Staffordshire, are they in the pits as well? Yes, they are. See, the teams are now beginning to realise that the fuel is low. They do not want to do what Oxford did last month and run out of fuel. Six minutes of racing to go. Notably, I don't believe Glasgow have pitted yet. There's six minutes of racing left to go. They've got a gap of 12 seconds between them and championship leader Southampton. Southampton could quite well be comfortable with a second place. They're so far ahead in the championship that even second place is still going to put them ahead of Glasgow, I yeah. think. So they don't necessarily need to send it. But having said that, Bolton, there it is, the top three. And Glasgow's Glasgow's in, in. The pits. Glasgow is in. Let's watch this. Please do not go away from Glasgow. I really want to see this. I see how long it takes for them to refuel. All they need is the fuel. They don't need the tyres. Bolton also coming into the pits as well. There it is, your top three. And there it is. Southampton have gone through. Glasgow are back out. And now we go racing for real in Kyle Army. This is what it all comes down to. The next five minutes, 11 laps completed by Southampton. They are six seconds ahead of Glasgow. Glasgow come out with a whole tank of fuel. They do not need to worry about being conservative with their fuel consumption, but Southampton do. They're in a car that is apparently one to two seconds a lap slower than the McLaren. Can they hold on is the question, and I really don't think they can because the gap is already coming down. It's knocking on the door of six seconds. We go now coming out of the pit. Oxford University have also pitted. That puts Cardiff up into fourth. UBR are, are in the pits now as well. Is that Munster posting a fastest lap? Very interesting to see that. Now, just, I've got some interesting stuff about Munster. I'm looking at the tyres that they're using. Everyone else is on mediums or hards. They've got the softs. How interesting. Meanwhile, UBR, half, I should say. Is that half? No, know, that's Birmingham. UBR is, it is Birmingham. Birmingham. UBR is Birmingham. It's, we haven't seen them a lot in the top server of late, but it's nice to have them join us in this penultimate round. They exit the pits. An update from Monty is here for us. Monty, what have you got? Right, we're looking at third place, Hull. Look at that, their uh, gamble paid off badly. They rejoined into traffic and look, they're now 12 seconds behind Glasgow. Ignore me, Southampton are in the pits. Southampton are... What? No, what has happened here? It's all gone wrong for Southampton because they cannot now come out ahead of Glasgow. Surely, surely, and they have, Glasgow have gone through. Whatever strategy that Southampton they went out of to achieve here has gone the way of the Dodo. What was going on here? They must have, Jess, is, you must be right. They must have run out of fuel. They weren't being conservative enough with their fuel usage. And as a result, Southampton are down into third. Hull A, magnanimously, are back into second after some really interesting choices. Hull on, on track for their best position and their best result all season. Bolton in fourth. Cardiff coming out of the pits, holding on to their fifth position that they qualified in. Bear in mind, they did drop down into 22nd a couple of laps in. So a fantastic recovery from Aaron Farmer. Vigo have got Cardiff in their sights, though. The Spanish team will be determined to snatch that fifth place back from Cardiff. We've got three minutes of racing left to go. By my timings, I think that's about two laps worth of racing left. Yes. University I think... Oh, no! Polytechnic! What on earth happened there? Did they miss their pit box? They must have. They must have overshot it a little bit. But that um, looked like that moment um, that David Coulthard came into the pits and just planted it into the wall back in the day. I'm watching the gap, by the way. between The, the gap that we want to see is Southampton and Bolton. Watch the gap, see it comes, it comes down. It's a bit stable at the moment, but once it gets to 18, it's really going to start to hit home. But Bolton's not really catching up that much. No, so I'm wondering if Bolton's struggling. If you look at the gaps, you've got 10 seconds between Glasgow and Hull, five seconds between Hull and Southampton. Southampton are in a slower car. They're not going to make it up. But don't, I don't think they've got anything to worry about with Bolton on the approach. I think more than anything, we're looking at a fairly stagnated grid position now for everyone involved. Unless someone makes a catastrophic error or a mistake, I think you're going to see these teams in these, these positions crossing the line and taking the check of flag in two minutes time. The Motford University 
uh, battling out with o is that a back marker they're passing or is that o Oxford University? De Montford going through on Oxford then. Absolutely wonderful. We are still racing then. There's still some drama on what on earth is that from Oxford? Weaving up the straight there. Weaving like on the break to, in. Looks like they're trying to sew. This is not the time for haberdashery. Oxford University under pressure from Queen Mary, having weaved around, having been overtaken by De Montfort. We know Oxford have got a interesting approach to driving at times, shall we say. Queen Mary have got Oxford in their sights. Oxford have already lost out on seventh position. Can they hold on to eighth? One minute to go before the checkered flag. Queen Mary desperate to get past. FSTN, meanwhile, lagging FSTN have run in out. the dark. I thought they went out of fuel good. for a minute there. I was going to say, they are certainly slower than the pack around them. USM on the approach to UBR. Meanwhile, Queen's Belfast. Having a look around there. Oh, side by side they go. Down to this left-hander. And is that Royal Trinity St. David in the block? Dark. Yes, it is. USM not having any of it. And nor are Queen's Belfast. Queen's Belfast. Take it. Oh, that's a really interesting... Oh, I just can't believe... Wales Trinity St. David are running with no lights on. Why are you doing that? I'm just, I can't imagine what the drivers must be thinking trying to get past this car. Scared. With no lights on. I wouldn't even say scared. Frustrated is how I imagine they're feeling right now. Because I... Especially when you think, go down the hill, look. Exactly. In this moment, Queen's Belfast, who have finally, I think, I think got past University of Wales Trinity. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Queen's and Queen Belfast Mary's got past, past Oxford. I just, oh man, what is going on at, at, at University of Trinity St. David? If someone on the stream can find out and let us know, I would love to know because it just does not make any sort of sense to me. But there are your race winners, unless a wheel falls off or Khan falls asleep, neither of which is going to happen. They have raced superbly here in the dark at Kyle Army. They have beaten out their competitors. They trounced an interesting strategic call from Southampton. And here they come in the final throws of their final lap. They've got ahead of Hull. They've got ahead of Southampton. They've got ahead of Bolton. One more result like this, and it'll put them back ahead of everyone else going into Williams Esports. A magnificent drive from Khan for Glasgow. Should see them seal victory for the first time tonight here at Kyle Army. And I have to say, that is how you do it. That is definitely how Glasgow has done it so far. And it's a driver that has won in the Sim Racing Series this season already. So he's already used to it. But he's got a few more corners to go, Giles, to take the checker flag. He does indeed, but nothing short of an act of God can stop him. Flashing his lights. He knows he's done it. You know he's done it. Crossing the line to take victory. It is Glasgow in first. And following them, Hull A take their best result of the season followed by Southampton who shockingly against all odds and against all predictions did make a pit stop they come in third a position ahead of the fourth that they qualified in Bolton crossed the line in fourth and Cardiff having qualified in fifth come through the final corner I will wait until they actually do cross the line because knowing Cardiff's luck something might actually happen Yes, they crossed the line. University of Wales Trinity St. David disconnected from the server. You may have just seen on the screens there. Vigo cross in sixth, the Montfort in seventh. In eighth, it is Queen Mary. Oxford University Racing crossing the line in ninth. Munster in tenth. Victoria, meanwhile, they come through to collect 11th position. Bath next up. And they cross the line to take 12th. University College Dublin, meanwhile. Crossing the line to take 13th, followed by Birmingham. Nice to see them joining us in the top server in this penultimate round. Crossing the line in 14th. Meanwhile, it is Strathclyde on the approach now to take 15th. Queen's Belfast. We've been talking about them. We've got a lovely sim rig and some excellent alumni. They head towards the finishing line to take 16th. Staffordshire will take 17th. Manchester in 18th. Hertfordshire in 19th, Polytechnic of Hong Kong in 20th, Aberdeen in 21st, and there it is, your top 20 drivers tonight here in the Formula Student Sim Racing Series. Jess, what do you reckon? Because for me, 
Southampton went big, but they didn't quite bring it home. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame for Southampton, but it could have been worse for them. They could have been outside of the podium spots and they're still going to get that championship lead going into the, the next next race. So it is not all over for them yet, um, but they're going to they're gonna find it very tough in race two. It's going to be a different kettle of fish with a, with, a, with a different driver. So, But well done to Hole A, one of the standouts so far. It's great to see. Don't forget, most of the teams are running their joker tonight. So a lot of teams will be running lighter cars. So they're going to be interesting to see against the likes of Glasgow and Southampton. And Hole A delivered. They did indeed. And truth be told, I'm going through the stream now. The comments on the stream have been absolutely magnificent all the way through the racing. It's really great to see everyone engaging tonight. Thank you ever so much to everyone that has joined us. We'll be bringing you more coverage very shortly. And don't forget, if you've got a team member in your family or your friends with one and you're going to be joining us at Silverstone and you've bought your spectator ticket, send us proof and you can join us here in the virtual commentary box. Get on that right now. But first up, We've got a VT for you. Roll VT, Monty. Hey guys, welcome to the Williams Experience Centre, where we're going to be hosting the final rounds of this season's Formula Student Sim Racing Series in their eSports Centre. I'm joined with Michael Preston, the uh, eSports Chief Engineer for Williams eSports, who's going to be showing us around the facilities. Shall we go? Yep, let's go. Let's go. So welcome to Grove, home of the Williams Esports Lounge. So here we have some of the simulators that the students are going to get to use for the final round of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series. We have the Williams Esports Edition Playseat Formula. We have a Fanatec Direct Drive steering wheel base and a Formula V2.5 rim. We also have low tail pedals and a 32 inch curved monitor. As you can see, there's 10 rigs here. We also have 10 rigs in the back room as well. So we can have up to 20 people racing in the same race at any given time. In the background, we also have our pro level sim rigs. So these are the sim rigs that our Williams Esports pro drivers would use if they're preparing for events or if they're taking part in events. So this year we've used those for taking part in the Le Mans 24 hour Le Mans virtual series. We've used iterations of those rigs for F1 Esports as well. And we also have a F1 style pit wall, which we use to provide a professional engineering capacity, which I will show you now. So here we have our F1 style pit wall. Um, the first thing you'll notice is the abundance of screens that we have. Um, it seems excessive, but as soon as you start adding um, onboard telemetry, timing, the screens quickly fill up, especially if you want to be watching the race as well. Like we have a, a replay from the Le Mans Virtual Series race here. This has capacity for four engineers to be working during the races. Um, we also use this for running events in the eSports Lounge as well. So if we're running LAN events or um, corporate events, then this is somewhere that we can run those events from if we're running session lobbies or doing admin for that kind of stuff as well. On the screen, we have Motec open at the moment. So that's a tool that we use to analyze telemetry. So this is something that most of the students in the Formula Student Sim Racing Series will have become accustomed to using throughout this year because Motec natively has the ability to analyze data coming out of Assetto Corsa, the simulator. So that's where there's one real area of crossover between sim racing and real life is that this is a tool that's used in professional level motorsport and the students can be using it, getting data from their sim rig at home and learning everything that they'd ever need to do using this software at a racetrack. So here's one of our pro level rigs that our Williams Esports Pro drivers would use. Um, as you can tell, there's a bit of a step up in hardware between these and the corporate level simulators that we have over in the rest of the Esports Lounge. And the main differences from this are coming from much heavier braking pedals, the higher forces coming from the direct drive wheelbase, three screens, so that you can use your peripheral vision a lot more um, to see the cars around you. Also, the much stiffer chassis for the rig itself. That's necessary to cope with all the forces coming out of the steering wheel base and going through the braking pedal. So the Husingvel Ultimate pedals that we have on this rig are capable of going up to 120 kilos of braking force. So that's capable of matching any or the majority of real racing cars. 
Um, so a lot of force. <laughs> yeah, they, these are a really good tool for professional drivers as well, testing for real world racing as well as our drivers in their professional sim racing capacity. This looks impressive, dare I ask the cost? Yeah, so the rig in its totality with the one PC included will be back about just over 10,000 Great British Pounds. Worth every penny, I'm sure. <laughs> yep, especially when you're looking for those marginal gains. Absolutely, no, nope, def definitely. If it gives you an authentic experience of what do you uh, feel in the car on the real track, then no, definitely it's, um, it's there with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Universities will be facing in the July for when we do the finals in Williams Esports. I'm looking forward to it and I'm sure everyone else is looking forward to it as well. We've got Eva Khan in the commentary box because he has won the first race for Glasgow and they weren't even on their joker and they've beaten someone who had a lighter car than them. Eva, massive congratulations on your win and were you a bit worried that South Southampton would have would have got you there. Oh yeah, for sure. We were we were we were completely yeah very afraid that they would uh, they would do the no stop and that Hull was gonna be on our tail the whole race basically. So yeah, I'm I'm really glad that this uh, Nissan bet didn't work out and we stuck with our McLaren our trusty old McLaren for for preparation and yeah paid off so. Yeah. yeah, you stuck to your gut feelings and knew what uh, what has worked as well. And of course, coming back from last month where you did get that penalty, unfortunately, coming into this yeah. one as well, you must have put hours and hundreds of laps of practice just to get to this point to redeem yourself. Yeah, absolutely. After getting like what was seems like endless amount of penalties last race for <laughs> the available track limits uh, penalty uh, report, um, I'm i'm quite happy we put so much preparation uh into this i couldn't thank the thank the team enough um for helping for helping with preparations we really put 101 percent into it especially with everyone having exams and and reports due and it's just been it's just been brilliant um it, all around the preparation it is a bit it's a busy time of year so of course best of luck to all of you with, with that preparation for your exams as well because there's a it is it, a tough cookie of course as well most of the tracks of course this season were in the in the daytime how was kyle army in the night yeah, it was like it was just like driving in the night it's, uh it was a bit it was initially a bit weird because we had the engineering challenge which is in the day and then going into the night oh, for yes. further preparation but i mean just turn the my room's lights off and then i put the brightness up on my monitor and it it was fine. Don't worry. You could flat with people with people's headlights, especially with Hull's headlights right up behind me. Uh, it did illuminate my my cockpit uh, very much. It was uh, yeah. <laughs> it was like I had the uh, floodlights on in the car. And speaking of Hull, they were on their Joker tonight, and they were keeping you very very close throughout as well. Yeah. What was the pressure going like for for the entire race? Because they they seem to be on your tail for most of it. Yeah, um, um, at the end of the day, they, it, was, Hull, it was more to keep a buffer for um, from Southampton. It, I was I was happy to concede if if it, if they were really too quick, but I was just able to keep them at a finger's distance from my from my diffuser to, and that was and that was close a couple times um, with with them. So yeah, I was I was a bit I was a bit afraid that they would they would they would go for for an aggressive move, but thankfully they raced clean. Uh, hard but fair at some point so yeah I, I was really happy that we kept ahead with the with the ballast that was my main fear going into this round is that we have 60 whatever kilos and we're gonna get destroyed by everyone else so we had to go and prepare properly and show what pace we have when we put our put our noggins together of course we obviously got race two coming up but after that we got the finals at williams esports in, in a few months as well what, what are you going to learn from obviously your experiences from last time as well? Because of course you, you won the championship last season. 
What, what are you going to do at Williams to make sure you get it again? Because there must be experiences that you learned from last year that can, you could take on to this year as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, last year was, was really strong. It was the first uh, competitive land event we did, and it was brilliant to, to wow. close off the championship there there um, in, at, at Williams. That was, that was brilliant. Um, for, for this year, it's more of the same. Just absolutely laps after laps to try to try bring yourself into the into the championship fight and um yeah and also with the last engineering challenge to go as well that's also now our newfound priority um to focus on so yeah very nice indeed that's all my questions so i'll hand it over to the rest of the commentary team for their questions Giles, i'll hand it over to you do you have any further questions to be completely honest with you, all I want to do is shake your hand. That was absolutely fantastic. You did everything you had to do. You kept them covered and you, did, you came up with a hell of a drive. And it just goes to show why you guys are defending champions. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've made a few errors this season. We do tend to, to have a bit of some, some, some blunders, but we do tend to compensate for it with, uh, with performances like these. So I'm happy to happy to have proven why, why we are defending champions. And yeah pretty strong so i'm quite happy with it brilliant excellent stuff congratulations and very best of luck to the rest of the team um anything you want to tell us about ugr's car i believe you did concept class last year meaning hopefully this year you'll be back out on track with your first electric powertrain is that correct how are you guys getting on uh from what i've heard it's been looking good i've been i've been on a year off so i've been a bit out of the out of the loop with what's going on but from what i'm hearing it sounds like it's going to be pretty strong and yeah, hopefully we have a car at comp uh, this year. Looking forward to seeing the gold and black back out on track with the new electric powertrain. Thank you ever so yeah. much for joining us in the comment. Good luck. Yeah, right thank now, you very much. We're going to go through some interesting feedback that we've had from that race because I've been looking around while Jess was doing the interview there and I've got a couple of updates. Southampton turned around and said that it was a single lap they were out by. They miscalculated their fuel by a single lap so could we see that strategy pay off in the second race tonight do stay tuned for that interestingly enough something that i was getting quite passionate about as you may recall was university royal trinity's david driving around with no <laughs> lights on it just did not make any sort of sense no now, me over, on the, over on the stream chat we've got some sense we've got uh, our formula student discord server set up and by the looks of things there was an error for Trinity St. David. They've sent screenshots, they have proof. For everyone else, it was pitch black, it was 1 a.m. But for Trinity St. David, they were driving around in broad daylight. So for them, they had no need to have the lights on. Really, ah. really odd. But that would explain it, at least. That, so that, that, there we are. That does it, that does it, that does explain it. Oh, we got a little bit of an announcement to uh, to tell the, 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 the viewers at home, Giles. Uh, we, we, do you do like a drum roll? <laughs> Oh, yes. Here we go. So, the exciting news that we have got is if you're looking for somewhere to stay at Formula Student UK 2024 at Silverstone, the campsite is now open. So, if you're struggling on where to stay, it, you can go on to the Formula Student website. I'm sure someone will put a link in the chat as well. More details or on the website as well for more information and it sounds like a lot of fun you get to obviously uh, meet other universities as well you're right near the Silverstone circuit as well and it's just generally very very exciting Giles you were at the campsite last year I've been at the campsite for a number of years yeah Jess. what have you been in your experiences oh my days uh, the international flunky ball world cup will be taking place in the campsite this year so make sure you are involved in that. That is being run by the team who operate the FS UK memes page over on Instagram. The rules are there. You've got an opportunity to, to submit your team for that. I've refereed a couple of flunky ball games in my time, and I nearly lost my voice, which I do when you're doing the commentary. Um, and also, I know there's a lot of comments going on on the stream at the moment regarding my uh, haircut. Um, so we've had we've had this in from Seb. Giles, are you related to Norwegian comedian 
Harold Ia, and oddly enough, he does actually look a bit like me with my hair like this. Um, elsewhere, Raphael Hodgson says, Boldy, boldy over there. Uh, this actually started at Formula Student. When, on my first year commentating, I got this haircut for the first time. I was a member of Cardiff Racing and I was doing the commentary and I said, look, I can't help pack the van up to go to Silverstone because I need to go and get a haircut. I might end up on screen. And the faculty liaison turned around and said, no, 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 we need all hands on deck. We need your help to pack the car up. I've got some hair trimmers. I know you like a, a very close buzz cut. I can just do it for you at the campsite. I thought, fine, fair enough. Go to the campsite um, a couple of days later, having packed the van. And there's not a lot of signal in the campsite. So as a result, you need to find something to do. And sometimes it isn't always flunky ball. Anyway, faculty liaison looks around and says, right, you wanted a haircut, didn't you? I said, yes, please. So I said, I want grade three all over. It's basic as hell. You cannot mess it up. And people had seen me with short hair before, and oh, I'm, I'm kneeling down, and the rest of Cardiff's looking around, and slowly but surely, their jaws just drop and drop and drop and drop. And I look, and I say, why are you all so surprised? You've seen me with this haircut before. And they turn around to me and said, Giles, I don't know what you were expecting, but whatever it was, this isn't it. Turns out, They'd used beard trimmers with the number three setting on my entire head oh, rather than the no. grade three. And I didn't think that, you know, my family would be particularly impressed. So the first time that they saw it was when I went live for the first time as commentator at Formula Student from the National Pitch Straight. And I'm live and I can feel my phone vibrating in my pocket. It's going... That's <laughs> finally, we come off air, take my phone out, and I've got about seven texts from my mother which essentially amount to, what the hell did you do to your hair? <laughs> Next so, time, Giles, have your phone on silent like when we're a Formula student as well. I think um, the key draw from that would be just, don't get your hair cut at Formula student, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, don't get your hair cut done at Formula student. But it's not just the campsite being open as well. We want to see everyone that's interested in Formula student, if you are free, in the formula student weekend i will need to get the date open it is the form the the week commencing the 15th of july but it's happening on saturday the 20th and sunday the 21st of july at silverstone tickets are 15 pounds you get to see it the that you get to go on the national panel you get to see the behind the scenes of formula student there's things that you get to see that only celebrities get to see if you go to the F1 side at Silverstone, I've been to the F1 and I've been to Formula Student. And I have to say, it, it was nice to see the scrutineering side of things as well. It was nice to see a behind the scenes of actual Formula Student teams and how they were getting on. I was even asking a couple of students on what the progress was. Are they going to get through scrutineering? What's their thoughts about the dynamic events as well? Yeah, it was also different exhibitions as well about different teams. I also, I, me and Monty also had a go at, at, at the Williams Esports Sim as well, and Monty beat me qu quite a lot there. He dominated that as well, so uh, that was kind of fun. But but yes, it's a dynamic event on the Saturday and the Sunday, and of course you get to hear our lovely voices again. Not Jess, me on I, I, Saturday though. Not me on Saturday though because um, I'm somewhere else. But you get to hear me on Sunday. But you get. Giles and Monty's voices for the whole weekend. So, so what's not to love? I think I just had them up and you pointed out that they'd be hearing our voices non-stop for two days. And then I don't think that's a particular sales point. To be honest. <laughs> I know at least one um, parent of a Formula student team member has said in the past about my commentary, does he ever shut up? Um, the answer to that is no, I'm afraid not. <laughs> Um, but yes, you can buy your tickets, and I will bleat on about this until the cars come home. I'm not kidding. Get your tickets for Formula Student. You really do want to be there, because chances are you're either a parent who's supporting one of the competitors, and you'll know how much time and effort and blood, sweat and tears gets put into this. And to have your support there at the track will mean a great deal to everyone involved. And if you are interested in motorsport at all, you've got to be there as well, because you get far more access to Silverstone and the teams than you ever would, at not just Formula One, but any other form of motorsport. And it's a lot cheaper. See, would you rather just bring back up the sales site for the tickets on Yomaki? Because I'm fairly certain they're only about 30 or 40 quid for weekend access. And that is 10% of how much it costs for 
the actual for, for tickets to the Grand Prix. I mean, I'm going to the Grand Prix later this year. It cost me a fair bit. Twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fifty. It's fi I mean, come on. No, I, I, thought, I, I thought it was fifteen pound. My bad. That was last year, probably. If I got that from. Fortunately, Jess, inflation is a thing. And yeah, inflation it, it, it is a yeah. thing as well. And there's yeah, different I, classes as well. It's not just there obviously. There you the... go, right there. Free parking. Children aged 15 and under go free. And hey, not all of us. Well, what's are more to be love? Max, Max, not all of us are going to be Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton. But if you've got a young'un and they're interested in getting involved in motorsport behind the scenes as an engineer, then this is the place to be. This is the place to come. I can only apologise for the quality of the commentary, but at the same time, please don't replace us because we love doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. So, there we are. Tickets are available now. 25 quid. It's cheaper than the meal out. And it's a whole weekend for uh, balls to the wall engineering excitement. It is It is the en It is the engineering of... Gla it is the Glastonbury of engineering. Forget Coachella. Forget Glastonbury. Silverstone Formula Street, the place to be. Anyway, now I've done my sales pitch. Let's have a look at what's going on over on the chat. Um, meanwhile, apparently, University of Trinity St. David are trying to convince everyone that they really did genuinely only realise that it was dark for everybody else once they saw the stream. Um, Exeter have taken over the chat, as usual, and that's the last I will say on Team Minty. Um, elsewhere, Hards didn't feel like the way to go in race one, says Adam Watson. Darren Davison says, great race to watch. Well done, everyone that took part. And well done, Hull A, for a great second place. It was a really fantastic race. And it's just a shame that Southampton miscalculated their fuel intake. I reckon because they're stuck with the same car for the second race, they'll be running the same strategy. Can they make it pay off this time around and keep their championship hopes alive? Stay tuned. Well, I think what they've got to do is they've got to figure about their strategy early on. If they know when they do their fuel, fuel calculations halfway through that they're not going to get to the end, pit early, get the undercut. Mm, absolutely. So then, you're, so then you're able to chase down the guards in front and maybe they could have got ahead of Hole. So the, well, the important thing of a, of, a, of a strategy is thinking ahead. We've seen, obviously, there was F1 Tim racing at the weekend. Um, well, well there's a few days just gone. They were engineers. They were always thinking ahead. They were thinking about, oh, what should our drivers do next? They got to think both because they won't have engineers like spe beating data because they're going to be the ones driving the car. So they just got to think, right, how, mu how much fuel am I using per lap? That's what I do on a regular basis when I race anyway. Because sometimes I put too much fuel in the car. If, if it's not enough, pit early. If, a few, if you think you can do it, Save you. It's just, this is absolutely integral to this. We're still having a chat with University of Our Trinity St. David about their conditions, shall we say. Southampton, meanwhile, getting their pocket calculators out and recalculating their fuel intake. I wish I could post this. I don't know whether, Monty, you might be able to put the image that University of Wales Trinity St. David have just sent us here on the commentary box up on the stream. But that is their view as screenshotted from Trinity St. David. You'd be able to find it in the general chat on Discord, Monty. That does explain a lot. I, 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 I apologize if I came off as a bit grumpy regarding that. I just couldn't make any sense of it. Now it makes sense. Mystery solved. They might do it for next, the next race as well. They might they may do it for the next race as well. But we've got um, not just formula student news. Monty's got some news of, of his own. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, I do. I'm a uh, cheeky plug in here. Apparently, I'm doing a karting event in uh, September, guys, uh, to raise money for Woo! the National Autistic Society. So... Um, Yes, if there's anyone out there that enjoys a bit of karting, that uh, wants to come to Rye House, where Lewis Hamilton started his karting uh, adventures as well, it would be lovely to have you guys on there as well. You'll be seeing me going around with these uh, cheeky little cards and posters uh, over the next few months, letting people know about it. It's 150 quid for a team, and you can have up to four drivers. We had a sellout event last year, so I'd love to see it sold out again. Love to see as many universities. Giles, Jess, if you guys want to join, and anyone else out there, if you want to put in a team from your colleagues at work, other racing drivers, go for it. Look, I've even got a, look, I've oh, even got a cheeky QR, QR code. code. There There's we are. There's the QR code. Don't Get know. your phones out and whatever it is you do with your phones. But what we'd love to know, there it is, the 90-minute endurance karting challenge as put on by Monty. 
It's a fantastic event and a, for a fantastic course. Monty, do you need a commentator? Because I don't particularly want to embarrass myself. Yeah, same. I think I'll be, better, I'll be better it, off, off the track than on track. Because have you seen how slow I am at karting? If I can uh, get live stream for the event, I will let you guys know. If not, we, if, we if not, we could just we could just come here for more support. Well, we uh, could always yes. do a, we could do, always do a commentary team. We could do a commentary uh, box team. Or, oh. or, or, or we could be in charge of James's socials. How about that? Well, having said that, I mean to be honest with you, Monty, he's he's a, he's a sweet guy, is Monty, and he's also very modest. Because what you may not realise is Monty is actually a pretty damn quick motorsport driver. He's got his motorsport license. I've seen him behind the wheel of a fair few things. And he is down quick, so I reckon if it was you, me, and Je you, me, and Monty, Jess, in the karting team, however slow we were, Monty should be able to make it up. It would make for a very interesting. <laughs> I'd just like to warn that I'm quick on esports because uh, laws of physics don't apply here. Like yeah, yeah, uh, that, all, all, all the cars were there, not running me. a joker tonight. Uh, I, I kind of have that issue being driving... 30 kilos overweight. I saw you driving Basil Faulty. You're being far too modest. Anyway, oh. meanwhile, you were driving Sol, the other day. Sorry. Pieces. Let's get back onto tonight. Here's <laughs> the photograph we've had in from Trinity St. David. This is their view out on tracks. So this explains a lot. So they actually only became aware, apparently, allegedly, that it was a night race when they looked on the stream. So ah. that would explain why they didn't actually see anything. So there we are. That would explain why there were no lights from Trinity St. David. It's, but... it's a partial explanation. Unfortunately for all the other 25 cars on the server, it meant that they were having to deal with a shadow for the whole race and not actually know when they yeah. overtook. It did, however, probably explain why they had such an epic first lap because they were navigating 25 cars in broad daylight, in daylight whereas everyone else yes. was trying to work out where everyone else yeah, was in the it. dark. So, I would love to be able to bring you my favourite new feature of this, especially because it's in the run-up to Formula Student it itself, because not only do we do the sim racing, but we, of course, we go to Silverstone and we do Formula Student for real. Um, and I like to do what I call the Formula Student News. And I did ask on my socials for people to get in touch and let us know. Pause, Giles. Pause, Giles. Any... Sorry, I just, oh, need to, I just need to respond back to Seb with a trigger moment. Jersey, not Guernsey. Continue. Right, once you've clarified which island Monty is occupying, um, I'd be like, I, I was on the socials, I was asking people to get in touch, let us know if you've got any Formula Student related news, new sponsors, new team members, something to get excited about, updates on your car progress. Wouldn't you know it, the only team to get in touch is the team that is so intent on being most vocal here in the Sim Racing series. It is Team Minty, as I like to call them. It is X Racing, and I got Kit, uh, got in touch with me to say that X Racing recently completed multiple engine tests and a 100% reliability rate. So there we are. That is what I am saying. I believe, though, you correct me if I'm wrong, X, and trust me, I know you will, but I believe those were static tests only with the engine on a static test rig as opposed to being in the chassis on wheels. So a bit of a way to go before Exeter are out on track but then again it is april the 13th currently and we don't go racing at silverstone until the 15th of july so plenty of time for them to get that engine into the back of the ships. so congratulations to exeter if you have any formula student related news do please get in touch because we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to do the news and hey if you've got anything at all i really do mean this if you've got anything at all to do with the dacia sandero i will buy you a pint at Silverstone. If you've got any news related to a Dacia Sandero, good news, and I will buy you a pint, anything. And it has to be real. Don't come at me with some nonsense. I'm not spending my money on nonsense. But yes, sorry, I had to get in there with that. We have got five minutes, Giles, until we're about to get underway again for race two with our second drivers in each team. We've got 26 universities. But Monty has got the provisional results for race one. Over to you, Monty. Helps if I put myself off uh, mute, doesn't it? Thanks, Jess. Uh, so here we are. 
Provisional uh, results from race one. So as we saw, Glasgow won from Hull, their season best result in second there, and Southampton in third. One lap away from an upset in a car which is two seconds a lap slower, but has a much bigger fuel tank, but apparently not that much bigger. Can they make amends in race two? We'll have to wait and see. Bolton, the other championship protagonist, there in fourth, albeit some way behind, so um, it will be interesting to see what they can do in the next race. Remember, they are still second in the championship at the moment, so to be fair, even a, a couple of uh, top three, top four positions here, that's still a huge amount of points for them that will still keep them in the hunt for the championship. Cardiff, they had a bit of a yo-yo uh, mm. race there, didn't they? They went from uh, fifth down to the back, and then back up to fifth in the end, so all well, that ends well. Vigo in sixth, uh, De Montford, their uh, best uh, result of the year, seventh for them as well. Queen's Mary then eighth, Oxford in ninth, and Munster managing to make those soft tyres work uh, with uh, a top 10 finish for them. Vittoria there in 11th, Bath in 12th, also a bit of a yo-yo race for them. Dublin, yet again, story of their season so far. Epic qualifying, epic pace, but then something goes wrong in the first lap. And then they always have to climb up. This is about the third time I've seen that happen this season for them, unfortunately. Birmingham as well there in 14th. Strathclyde in 15th. Queen's Belfast in 16th. Staffordshire in 17th. Manchester 18th. Hertfordshire whoop, whoop, in 19th. Um, Poly Univers Polytechnic University of Hong Kong there in 20th. Aberdeen in 21st, Yerk in 22nd, <laughs> UWTSD, yeah. the Blinds Racers there in 23rd, Napier in uh, 24th, and then we have got Nottingham Trent in 25th, and then Exeter, our uh, people's champion, rounding out the back of the field there in 26th position. I would like to clarify, by the way, before anyone gets too worried about my sense of humor in relation to Exeter. My sister is actually an Exeter University student down at their Penryn campus. So, ah, my condolences. You know, it's, all, it's all fair. It's all fair. Uh, yes, so there we are. Meanwhile, um, Seb, I've got no idea what you're on about, and I had hoped you'd been re-educated. So whatever's going on <laughs> with yourself and Lana, I just hope you're having a nice time. Uh, I mean, if, you, if you're in the shower and Lana's involved, I would just leave you to it, to be completely honest. Meanwhile, we're going to go racing again very soon. Do please get in touch if you've just joined the stream. Let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting. We know that Wendy's here. Big shout out to Wendy. I can only apologize for some of the smut you're having to read. Wendy, far too classy for this. And we're going to go racing again, guys. What do you think? Southampton, can they make this strategy work for a second time? Well, as long as they play the conservative game, then they, 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 they got to make it work. So as soon as they get past lap one or lap two, that's when they've got to think on their feet in terms of strategy. And like I was saying earlier, they got to think halfway into the race, so 15 minutes in, what are they going to do? Are they going to pit or are they going to stay out? They've got to commit to one. And if the strategy goes wrong, then that will cost them a heap of time. But we don't know what they've done in qualifying. So it does depend on, what, on, on where their second driver has qualified. So it could be completely different to obviously the first driver. But we are in, I believe, free practice as the drivers are warming up, ready for the second race of the night. And I'm really, I'm really excited. I think this has been one of the most exciting races in terms of strategy more than yes. anything. They're my, they're, 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 I think my favourite race was still Virginia Raceway. It was fantastic. Mm. But my favourite race in terms of the strategy element is definitely yeah. this one. I can completely get behind that point of view, Jess. In fact, I think I share it. I must say, I've been analysing what Southampton have been saying in my head. And I think they might be able to just make this work without having to worry about when to pit. My thinking is I picked up on something that they said. They said they were one lap off. Yeah. Now that implies to me, Jess, that they actually had space in the fuel tank for an additional lap of fuel, but they didn't put it in because they didn't think they'd need it, which implies, therefore, they actually haven't been running with a full fuel tank. So they can get full race distance out of that fuel tank if they run the calculations correctly. It's all about safety factors and safety margins, putting that buffer in. But with that in mind, if they were one lap off, if they put that additional lap in, assuming they that they had... Got to the end. 
Exactly. And I think they must have room in that fuel tank for it. I'm really interested to see where Southampton go with it. Because I don't think it's over. The f he has not won at Southampton. And that's the beauty of having two races, Giles, because if the strategy doesn't work in the race one, then they could do a completely different one race two or have a chance to redeem themselves in race two from race one as well. So that, that that's why I like that it's not just one big race where they have driver swaps. It's just a complete reset, all cars lining up on the grid, ready to get racing again and obviously chance to change a few things in terms of the, the car not the car choice but in terms of the setup as well because yeah like obviously giles was alluding to earlier and uh, what i was speaking to um glasgow earlier as well the engineering challenge was in the day so i know the characteristics of the car may be the same the conditions will definitely no. be not absolutely and as a result of that, they will not have the experience they were going into this had they had the exact same conditions for both the engineering challenge and the race itself. Because let's remember, a lot of these teams take the engineering challenge completely seriously. Glasgow has dominated throughout this year in the engineering challenge, without a shadow of a doubt. And I'm sorry, but that's just the truth as far as I'm aware. And in, with that in mind, they've progressed incredibly well on the racing and I think that's aided by the fact that they've been taking on the racing challenges serious but among the engineering challenges it has benefited them in the race because they've gained that extra experience that extra understanding of the engineering behind the setup for each track and each car that we've had this series I do becomes slightly unpicked because although as you say just the setup's the same the car and the driving conditions aren't and you I mean, maybe you'd expect Glasgow to possibly have suffered a little because of that disparity, but they're in a league of their own at the moment. Southampton clearly one of the very few that can touch them, along with Bolton. And Southampton have taken a gamble tonight. And for us as spectators and for us in the commentary box, that's fantastic because it means when we go to Williams Esport, we're going to get some very exciting racing and some very close finishes that will determine the result of the championship. But for Southampton, as Monty was saying earlier, they have one hand on the trophy. They gambled, and at the moment, that gamble is not paying off, and they could well have thrown it, thrown it away at the last minute. And we won't know the overall results, will we, until the, the ending of tonight as well. So, of course, obviously we saw Glasgow take the win, but we've seen in multiple rounds, we had two different race winners. And like last week, the results completely flipped on his head. Cardiff did a win a race. That didn't stop them. For winning the overall round so i think it's gonna be if you want to get the most points tonight to take the overall round victory you've got to improve on that consistency as the warm-up has just finished and the universities are about to line up on the grid giles oh excellent we're gonna go racing again very very shortly here at sim racing hq kyle army in the dark the teams go racing again for the second time tonight the penultimate round of the formula student sim racing series 23 24 Glasgow, Bolton and Southampton are the three teams that could clinch the championship overall when we go to Williams Esports in July. So all eyes will be on those three teams. Southampton driving a different car to the rest of the field. They're in the Nissan. Everyone else is in the McLaren. The McLaren, the faster car. The Nissan, larger fuel tank, can go the distance without a pit stop. Theoretically, not proven as yet. Shockingly, Nissan and Southampton had to pit in the last race and it cost them the win can they go better can they make this strategy pay off or is it going to be a question of the fastest car out on track winning as ever do stick around to find out good grief this is a shocking grid giles oh yes. we we have a new pole sitter it's hong kong university new... polytechnic no where's no. southampton and where's glasgow southampton are down in sixth and glasgow are in fifth well, let's go through the what grid and see where there? they all are. This is an right. unexpected turn for the books, Go on, Giles. Let's do this thing then. As we've just been saying, for the first time in ever, Polytechnic of Hong Kong are, are your pole sitters for this race. Hull A are in second. Exeter are in third. But, um, NTU are in fourth, in fifth. Shockingly, Glasgow Racing in fifth, in sixth, it's Southampton. In seventh, it is Vigo. In eighth, it is Bolton. Cardiff are in ninth. In tenth, it is Hertfordshire. In eleventh, Oxford University. Meanwhile, twelfth is University College Dublin. Staffordshire are in thirteenth. Aberdeen are in fourteenth. Bath in fifteenth. 
UBR, that is Birmingham, they're in 16th. The Montfort University are in 17th. Queen's Belfast are in 18th. In 19th, it is Manchester. Strathclyde in 20th. That would usually be where things would finish, but tonight we've got a bumper grid for you. In 21st, York A. Victoria are in 22nd. FSTN are in 23rd. University of Wales, Trinity St. David are in 24th. 25th, it is MTU and Queen Mary. For all the students, round us out in 26th. Ooh, I, 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 I've got my predictions for this one. I think Hole A have got this victory because they have been on the front row before and they've got Glasgow and Southampton behind and they're on their joker. So I think Hull are going to do what they did do in race one and win in race two. What are this your could... thoughts, team? I'm really struggling to predict this one. I'm really struggling to predict this one. It's blown my mind to see Glasgow and Southampton <laughs> down there in fifth and sixth. Just was not expecting it. And as you say, Hull clearly very strong in the last race. They've qualified in second. Polytechnic University of Hong Kong are in first. Wasn't expecting to see that. Have they just had a very good qualifying? Will they get swamped off the line? Time will tell. Exeter finally got coming good on the hype in the chat. They are there in third. NTU in fourth. And I just can't place it, Jess. I really can't. I can and what see about you, three, Monty? I can see it going three ways, guys. Um, I agree with Jess. In theory, this should be Hull's race to win now because they have the Joker. Yes. This should be theirs to win. This is the most competitive we've seen them all season. On paper as well, Southampton should win this because in theory, they don't need to make a pit stop, but that's already gone wrong once this evening, so who knows. However, my gut feeling going into this weekend was this is still the start of the Glasgow steamroller again. And seeing who's in the car here, granted, he may not be at the front of the grid. But mm. Jack he's, McCauley... He's quick on race pace. He's quick on race pace. Jack McCauley has slaved away on the practice server. He's done over 600 laps himself. He was the fastest Ooh. in practice. And, Giles, as you will remember from last year, he has the mantle. So, that's got to be worth a second mm. lap as well, having a mantle moustache. Oh, it definitely does. It's the rule here at Formula Student. If you've got a Mansell Tash, chances are you're going to be a fair bit quicker. We're about to go racing in Kailani in the dark here at Formula Student. Sim Racing 23-24, the penultimate round before we go to Williams Esports for our grand final. I'm Giles Cosgrove. In the commentary box with me, Jess Ball and James Monty Montgomery, Polytechnic University of Hong Kong on pole. Rounding out your front row, it is Hull A. And we're about to go racing again. The lights come on. The revs go up on the pit straight of Kyalami. It's pitch black. And all, we're coming out of the shadows then, who is going to come out best? Polytechnic have got a fantastic start off the line. Hull just about managing to hold on to it. I think but they've been swapped by Exeter in second. Yes, they have. Exeter vying with Hull for second place. They are up into Hull, up into second, fighting it out Glasgow, massively. Wow. With Hull. And Glasgow launching up into fourth. Southampton up into fifth. And MTU down into sixth. Polytechnic getting away with a 0.5 second lead off the line. Exeter in second now, having qualified in third. Hull A now in third. Three or four abreast at times through Kyalami. It's pitch black. Everyone seemingly running with their lights on. No such troubles. Four way of Trinity St. David as far as I can see currently. Exeter are chasing down. Polytechnic who have gone away with a fantastic start. Oh, Giles! Seconds ahead. Giles, Glasgow, and Hull are going at it once again. They are continuing the story Ooh. that they've started in race one. Glasgow met their match once again, but this time it is Hull A right in front of them. Hull A is going to have the faster car, so Glasgow's got to get a move on in order to get it past them because they're about three temps separating them. Staffordshire oh. and uh, University of College Dublin are fighting. It's good to see Staffordshire doing very well in the top server and is in the top ten. Absolutely fantastic result for a number of teams who are here in the top server, some of them for the first time tonight. And Glasgow all over the chuff of... No, in fact, no, it is South Glasgow are all up in Hull A's business. Exeter getting away very nicely. A number of people will be very happy with that. Team Minty doing remarkably well in second place. But ahead of them by a second, Polytechnic University of Hong Kong. Where have they come from tonight? I know where they come from. They mean business. We always like to get shot results in Formula Student Tim Racing Series, and we potentially could be getting one tonight. But 
It's not over yet, as we're seeing Whoa. Southampton. No way, no! To no. Glasgow. Yes, I don't believe what I'm seeing. That did not just happen to Southampton, who were making a late lunge on Glasgow, and they came off so badly, and that is absolutely awful for Southampton. Is that over? That is that hopes over. Have they got damage? I don't know whether they've got damage or not, but they already have a slower car and now they are down in 16th and I, oh my days. Commentators curse. We, we, we were saying they had to be conservative and look what happened. So they're going to have to pit for damage anyway. So the, the answer to can they make it to the end with, with uh, zero stops? The answer to that is no. They might well be able to, but it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. They're just going to get swamped. They're managing to hold on to 16th at the moment, but the traffic has not spread out. We've been racing for three minutes. They haven't quite settled into the groove yet. There are the team. The old oh, Bolton, what have you done there, mate? That's an oh, interesting Bolton. Line, to say the least. I've got a question for you, Giles. I I'm yes. not used to seeing Bolton this low down. They're usually fine with the likes of Southampton and Glasgow. What has gone on with their pace this weekend? It's not only that. I think something's gone awry for a lot of teams in qualifying, Jess, because yes. you see Southampton and Glasgow down there in that position, and then Bolton were nowhere near. Southampton, meanwhile, have pulled their way back up into 15th. They're making a magnificent recovery. They are under an immense amount of pressure in the field full of McLarens. They are clearly faster by a second or two, and yet the Southampton are trying to hold their own, battling out currently with McScottish of Aberdeen. Monty, what can you tell us about what went on in qualifying? Have you got any information for us? I haven't really got much information on qualifying. We did see that Bolton were in the top 10 as well. Ditto with Cardiff. I think there was a lot of carnage on the first lap there, which has flipped everything on its head because uh, Bolton must have got involved in that because they were definitely in the top 10 to begin with. Ditto Cardiff. Ditto... Um, Dublin, though ironically this time they've actually managed to stay in the top 10. I think it was just a very, very messy first lap in where two of the championship protagonists have fallen over themselves and kind of like last season, we're now watching uh, Glasgow for the moment capitalise on it. And there it is, Aberdeen getting past UWTSD. Uh, Southampton go through on USM, Strathclyde overtaken by Southampton, Southampton on the march, 20 minutes of racing to go, how far back up the running order can they get, NTU in fifth, putting pressure on Glasgow, Glasgow unused to being this position, I have to say, there's a gap of just over a second, well, in fact I stand very corrected that's not a second that is no gap at all and that has gone dramatically wrong for NTU it was 0.3 of a second I do apologise and it became nothing at all just then and that is about disaster for NTU who are now four seconds behind the team from Glasgow Monty I've got a funny feeling you're going to be very busy you and the team after the checkered flag of this race tonight. potentially but I tell you what Giles a bit of a science lesson going on here I bet Glasgow glad that they've got that extra weight in their car F equals MA that's twice now they've been uh, punted into and twice that the yep. other car has spun off and they carry on it's helped them quite a bit hasn't it in, 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 in P4 of course about a four second gap between them and NTU which I believe is Nottingham Trent University so another university that we don't expect do well in the top five as well that's just a beauty sometimes of having less drivers as we're seeing a dmu fighting with aberdeen for 30 plates and that's not going to end well they hit the wall and that is definitely damage on that car it's going to be an old oh, that was an unsafe rejoin from one of the cars back there and oh, that's me, not mate. gone well giles i just i was expecting more of the same we haven't had it it is carnage from front to back and there is Hertfordshire on the approach to Democrat University and Birmingham Racing. Clinging on to the racing line, mooring it in fifth, down to fourth, down to third, changing down through the left-hander there. Very nicely done. University College Dublin, meanwhile, off track. They've rejoined. There's the headlights of someone else on the approach. Bath are off as well. As through go University of Wales, Trinity St. David and USM and Manchester. Bath being swamped by traffic as they rejoin. University College Dublin on the un, un, on the inside of Manchester. They move up into 13th. Meanwhile, Hertfordshire are down as DMU go through. 
on board with DMU who are all over the chaff of Birmingham getting very close there trying to find a way around magnificent defense from Birmingham who've got the racing line going wide there as a result go to Motford inviting Hertfordshire to potentially have a go Manchester in 16th they're under pressure themselves from Bolton Bolton not usually down this far. Bolton having a look on the inside. Not just yet, thinks the driver from Bolton. I'll bide my time. The traffic very strung together. As a, as, as there's a massive train from the likes of P8 to, I'll say, P15. Speaking of that, we've got um, Everstien fighting with Bath. And Bath could get the cutback here. It's a really tight bend, so they've got to get the better traction that they need throughout that corner but they're just unable to do it and we also got mtu versus southampton southampton not gaining as we would have liked but don't forget they 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 don't have to do an extra stop but it's not going to give them the advantage near near the front we are expecting to see the first few, few oh i was going to say about pit stops but something very strange has happened and College Dublin has had it off. I would expect Giles to see quite a few universities coming to the pit, pit box in the next two laps or so. Probably a few of them. Has someone else gone off? Giles! Oh. There's been carnage oh. after carnage after carnage and uh, uh, oh, and they hit the wall again. They can't even get back going. Strathclyde have an absolute disaster on their hands and I'm not convinced they can recover from that. It's dark. No. Are they going the right way? I couldn't possibly tell you. Getting back going are the team from Scotland. Polytechnic University, five laps complete, 1.8 seconds ahead of their closest rivals out on track. It's Exeter, Hull A piling on the pressure to Exeter, 0.1, 0.4 seconds separating the two teams. And we're seeing, I think, um, MTU in Southampton ch um, chasing down the fast lap. And as I was saying, we got Bolton and Bath in the pit. So they're getting their stops done nice and early, trying to get that undercut, and they're going to get some clear air as well to try and get their cars right to the end of the race. And we know they're just going to take some fuel. They're not going to worry about tyres. Are they going to come out of the pit lane? Will that trigger the guys near the front to do the exact same? I think I'm almost certain the hole will potentially come in front of me as well as DMU trying to get past... Bath, well, at least most people have lights this time, so they're able to see this part of the circuit. <laughs> lights are out on track. It is Kyle Army in the dark. If you're just joining us, we've got 15 minutes of racing. It is the last race before we go to Williams Esports. And shockingly, the championship leaders, Southampton, are down in ninth after a calamity that set them well down the running order. They made a lunge for Glasgow, trying to get up ahead of their close up with one of their championship rivals. It all went wrong. They're now on the recovery drive, on the march, in a car that is technically one to two seconds slower. But necessarily, do they need to pit? Possibly not. The question is, have they done the calculations correctly this time? We saw they made a wrong judgment in the last race and they had to pit. It cost them the win. Can they go better this time? They will be crossing every finger toe and appendage that they can trying to get past Munster not close enough they'll be counting on the teams ahead of them having to pit they won't do if they've got it right with the fuel intake this time around they've got eight positions to get back into the race lead they need this win to keep their championship hopes alive as far as I'm concerned University College Dublin now into the pit not really going to help Southampton because of course College Dublin were already behind them in the first place as uh, Exeter has caught up quite a bit to Hong Kong Polytechnic for first place. So the last time we saw Exeter fight for the race win was in Virginia Raceway. That was round number four of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series 2023-2024. And they're fighting for the position once again. Imagine if there was two servers. I wonder if they could have been in a position to be in the top server anyway, because their pace... Both Where's of their driver pace from, is amazing Jess? between the, the I'll say the top three are just running away with it, Giles. These aren't teams I expected to see in the top three, Jess, and I'm very confused. Well, that that that's the that's the beauty, isn't it? It, it? We always like to welcome a lot of universities to form the students in racing series and it gives them a platform, they improve 
season after season, even race after race as well. We started oh. in October as Hole A has gained a bit more time to exit, actually, as we were saying. That we, we've gorgeous. noticed the improve yeah, we've noticed the improvement from quite a lot of teams. From race one, we were at Brazil in October. It was ages ago. And now we're here at Kyle Army for round six. And we're seeing teams that we weren't expecting to be at the front at the front. Definitely That's really going to help them when we go to Williams Esports oh, in two months' time. This is going to be very close now as Hull try and make a move down the inside of Exeter. 0.7 seconds, 0.8 seconds separating the top three years. They make a lunge and there's not enough room there. They can't quite get past the team from Devon, the Northerners, battling out with the Southerners. Meanwhile, the team from Hong Kong having nothing to do with it. Aberdeen and McScottish into the pit. Meanwhile, back up front, the gap's reopened now. Exeter getting away from Hull A. Aberdeen in the pit. UBR go through. NTU in fifth. Glasgow in fourth. Hull A in third. Chasing like a mad thing down Exeter, who are in second. And Polytechnic University of Hong Kong are in first. There is NTU, Napier University. Do correct me if I'm wrong, but they're in fifth. And it looks to me, Jess, like this is going to be a complete upset for the usual protagonist there is glasgow you'd expect that view for the driver from glasgow empty tarmac but do you know what it's not empty tarmac they are eight seconds off the race lead what has happened to glasgow they were caught up in that incident expecting. giles with southampton without that incident with southampton only on the race they would have been up there with the top three that has cost them quite a bit of time so we did. Monty was saying to us before the race that Glasgow on paper with this driver were the best in race pace. They were top in the practice. And with just that one incident, they lost a bit of time, of course. It would, we will see in terms of the pit stops, but I think without that incident, I think Glasgow would have definitely been up there with the top three. Without a doubt, you are right there. Meanwhile, NTU coming into the pits. What are they, how long are they going to stay in for? What are they stopping for? Is it fuel? Is it tyres? It should be fuel on this track. Oxford University going through. Exeter are well up and very much close to taking the lead of the race tonight. Polytechnic at Exeter nearly side by side. 0.15 seconds separating them. The team from Hong Kong under pressure from the team from the south of England. What can Team Minty do here as they come under pressure from Hull A as well. There's traffic ahead of them. That's not going to help the front runners as Hull A look to the inside of Glasgow. They're side by side into the left hander. What can Hull A do here? Can they get past Exeter, who was so close to the lead for a second there? But the gaps reopened to nearly a second. And is it me or have they got problems? Who is that? Oh, that is they Hull. Out of fuel. And they stopped on track. They ran out no. of fuel, Giles not oh my days and is that them out then if they run out of fuel is that it over or can they refuel in the if they get and they can the refuel virtually? in the pits but i think they get towed so that it was my prediction going out the window because i predicted whole eight to win the race now that is a turn in the books for hull and look at the gap glasgow, to glasgow and exeter from that glasgow it's come down benefit from that glasgow up into third I can't wait to see what this does to the points. Cause oh, that, oh, no, you just spoke too soon. Glasgow had an off. Was that, I don't think, Glasgow did have an off. Was it me? It looked to me, Jess, like they, they thought about going into the pitch, changed their mind, snapped it back. And they lost, they lost a lot of time. They lost six seconds. There were six seconds behind Exeter. And oh, we got, um, we got quite a few people in the pit lane. I apologise for missing that one, guys. I was so busy seeing um, Hong Kong and Polytechnic come into the pits that I no cut away just as Glasgow were doing that. It's fine because good, good. That, see, that's why you have us, Monty. I'm surprised that the chat isn't going more crazy because look who's in the lead. It's only Team Minty. Exeter University are in first place. Glasgow are in second, but they are a whole 12 seconds off of the leaders. Oxford University back in third. Can they actually get through with a fuel enough to the end? I'd like to see that. Polytechnic, they did pit. They're in fourth now. A second behind Oxford University, and we've seen how fast they can be. Don't write Polytechnic off just yet, because I don't think Exeter have pitted 
and University of Glasgow. No, they haven't. Uh, 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 X thousand pitted, and neither has Glasgow, and neither has Oxford. Polytechnic was one of the first lot to pit, and you're they're your net race leader. So if they could gain time on this undercut, the win could be theirs. But we've got to see how are Southampton doing. That Southampton are behind Polytechnic for now. But if they could get those fuel to the end, they'll be in a net P2. But they will have Glasgow breathing down their neck and Exeter as well. So it will be interesting to see what happens there. Meanwhile, you're ending on board with Nottingham Trent University battling with Cardiff Racing for a spot. Decent points on offer for the top 10. Late on the this break. Close. As we're going to try and go for it. They're very close oh. on the inside. I thought they had that then. I think, I I think really... Cardiff had that one covered there, but Nottingham Trent, no, they're going to enter. You are definitely not give up without a fight. No. I've got a funny feeling that it's a matter of time before Nottingham yes. Trent take Cardiff's position. Meanwhile, Polytechnic oh. of Hong Kong on the hunt for third position. I thought they were going to get it here. Of Oxford oh. University, and there go Oxford, well off and away. We get t tapped out by Polytechnic. I imagine the stewards will have to look into that. Oxford, I imagine, will raise it. And oh, dearie me. Could that be a blotch on what was otherwise a perfect race for Polytechnic University, who've driven outstandingly from lights out? I really wouldn't want to see them penalised for that. It looked to me like a racing incident, but then again, but is that is that is up to the is up to the the stewards? Stewards, exactly. We don't get a say. University College Dublin, meanwhile, flying on down, getting past FSTM, squeezing on through there. Nicely done, and they get away into 15th. Meanwhile, University of Wales Trinity St. David with their lights on this time go through on Hertfordshire. Meanwhile, Polytechnic University have been overtaken by Staffordshire. So off Staffordshire camera, guys, just to, uh, to let you know, it looks like that uh, Polly U and Southampton had a coming together, and Polly U have spun off. Where's ah, Southampton? Going? Southampton as Exeter is third. in. The race leaders take to the pit lane. They've got a 14 second gap between themselves and Glasgow, who are up into second. It doesn't matter because Glasgow have pitted as well. So Southampton are 30 seconds behind. This is when Southampton's pit strategy comes into its own. Exeter back out on track though. Exeter still in the lead. Exeter take the lead as they exit the pit lane. Surely nothing can stop them now with Starship said. Southampton have though got past their championship rivals Glasgow. Polytechnic University in fourth, barreling down the start finish straight through that first right hander. They're in fourth. They were in first. They had a bit of a coming together with Oxford and then off screen had a coming together with Southampton. Staffordshire in the pits now as well. As are Vigo, as are Oxford University. Staffordshire heading back out on track. Behind them is Oxford. Behind them is Vigo. All three back out onto the track. There is UBR. And I believe that's one of the last of the pit stops as well. I can't remember if St oh, Staffordshire did, did just come into the pits there. Birmingham had just come in as well. And we got, we're got going to have an update from Monty about what's gone on in this on this race so far and maybe with a few pit stops. Monty! That's been a very chaotic race so far, hasn't it, guys? So we reckon Southampton lost about 10 to 12 seconds where they're coming together with uh, Glasgow. If you look at the gap between them and Exeter, nine seconds, you have to wonder if Southampton could have been leading this race had they not had that spin before. It's very much now going to be about can Southampton hold on to second because they're going to have a charging Glasgow and Hong Kong Polytechnic uh, University charging down on them on full tanks. They don't need to conserve fuel. We they're can't even guarantee Southampton race. can get to the finish line yet because they mucked us up last time. So this could still be a battle for second that we're looking at on screen just now for all we know. Tell you now, though, look who's here. Look who's back in the running. Polytechnic University of Hong Kong piling on the pressure. One of your championship protagonists, Glasgow. We often see Polytechnic. And there is Southampton in the pits. Again. Yet again. Maybe oh, we just called their strategy completely wrong. Maybe they've always needed to pit, but they're running down into fifth. And Cardiff are going to go through on them as well, surely. They should Cardiff have pitted earlier. Cardiff are in the pits as well. I don't believe what I'm seeing, Southampton. What is going on? What has happened here? Cardiff away now. They've been overtaken by Staffordshire and Bolton. 
Cardiff, not even in the top 10. Through go Oxford University, through go Vigo, Cardiff down in 12. Great not for me. The Welsh Dragon will have wanted to see. There's traffic up ahead, could potentially Cardiff make up these positions with these fellow cars in front, but I don't see it happening. We've got two minutes of racing left. That's a lap and a half to go. For your race leaders, they are currently Exeter, 13 seconds ahead of University of Glasgow Racing. This is Exeter's race to lose now. Two and a half minutes to go. Just shy of a lap duration. Polytechnic putting on the pressure to uh, Glasgow. Glasgow are 0.4 seconds ahead of the team from Hong Kong. I, I, and I think, Giles, the results of this race is not going to be the results you see on your screen. I think there's going to be a lot of protest and a I've lot to discuss. Oh, I think we're going to be discussing. Oh, I, and I just jinxed just, again. I just, oh, my goodness. That's not gone well for anybody involved there. Well, apart from Glasgow, who, as Monty was saying, seems to be running as an indestructible vehicle because of their additional ballast. That is true, because most of these, the few, mostly Glasgow well and Jokers, obviously the likes of Southampton and Glasgow, they're running more, more, more weight compared to everybody else as well. But yeah. That things are going to change, I think, I believe, tonight. The first race was very calm. It was very nice in terms of strategy. This race seems to be... Mm, I, I, I was going to say something, but I, I don't want to be, be come across rude or anything. I'll say it for different. you, students. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, guys, honourable mention here to Queen Mary, who starts at the back of the grid. From what and I can sixth. see, have done their pit stop. Look, they're up in sixth now, and... Um, Less than three are they seconds a one driver away from a entry? Less than three seconds away from a podium, and yes, they are a one driver entry. They've kept it clean, and that's saying a lot in this race. Queen Mary in sixth, MTU in fifth, Polytechnic, University of Hong Kong, having come together, making a late lunge, or well, not even a late lunge, making a lunge on Glasgow. Didn't come off well from it, but then again, who does? Uh, oh, London. not again. Oh, me. Hertfordshire. <laughs> Coming off worse from a collision with UCD, University College Dublin battling it out with Hertfordshire for 13th position. Side by side they go, down to the inside. And that looks to me like University College Dublin sealed the deal, have they though? Hertfordshire coming back, not quite got it, having to settle for 14th, looking to the inside, forcing them wide. Ha Hertfordshire on College Dublin. They've got the racing oh, line and there's no. the inevitable collision that we could just see coming a mile off. Yeah, it was inevitable. There was not much space being left. And be careful, guys, because that was an unsafe free join. You got, even getting... though it's dark, they got to look at their mirrors and see where a car is coming. If they know that the gap is quite close, just wait until the cars go past. Even though you're losing time, it's better I, than getting damaged. I've got to interrupt you, Jess. I do apologise, but here Final they are. Lap. There's a great deal of hype for them. In the chat, they are an incredibly confident team and they seem to have put their money where their mouth is now. Exeter University have come out of nowhere unexpectedly in the lead of this race. They've been fairly dominant throughout. 14 laps completed, the clock has run out and only a few corners stand between Exeter and victory in race two of the penultimate round of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series 2023-2024. They've been yo-yoing between the top and bottom servers. They've joined us in the top server tonight, and boy, have they made the most of it. The team from Devon going through the final throws of Kyalami in the dark, piloting the McLaren towards the checkered flag now. Only an act of God stands between them and victory. Suffice to say, I think the chat may become unbearable as Exeter rounding out towards the finishing line. It is a long course, and as you can tell, I might be filibusting a bit because my hype can't last the rest of the lap. Here they come then, Exeter into the final corner to take a win in the Formula Student Sim Racing Series. Exeter are your race winners here at Kyalami, the second race tonight. They cross the flag. There they are, and Glasgow, meanwhile, fighting off all opposition. They've come out remarkably well with that heavier car, a number of collisions, and they've come out better from all of them. Glasgow crossed the line to take second. NTU on the way to third, can you believe, with pressure from Polytechnic University, who were leading. It all went wrong for the team from Hong Kong. They crossed the line in fourth. 
MCU in fifth now. Munster there crossing the line. Queen Mary forming a student crossing the line in sixth. Followed, disappointingly, Southampton in seventh. Bolton crossing the line in eighth. Staffordshire will take ninth. Followed by Vigo in tenth. Not quite making the top ten are Cardiff. Nor are Oxford in the top ten. They have to settle for twelfth. Bath finishing in 14th there. You can see on your screen as well, Trinity St. David. Hopefully their system... Yes, they're running with their lights. We've not seen a lot of them tonight, but they are running with their lights. Meanwhile, Hertfordshire, one through old, stomping round cross in 16th. Aberdeen and McScottish take 17th. Manchester in 18th. FSTN in 19th. UBR in 20th. DMU cross the line in 21st. Hull A in 22nd. And York A in 23rd. Birmingham running out of fuel on the finish line. At least they got the right side of the finish line, unlike other teams in this race. <laughs> there we are then. I have no idea what to make of the chat, and nor do I expect to. Yeah, I, I'm glad I have a look, look to the chat at the moment, but I think quite a few people will be delighted with that as well. But one special shout out to Bolton, so they had a good recovery drive there because they were near the bottom in the first few laps and they were able to get into the top 10. So even though it's not the result they would have liked, it is a good consolation prize, I would say, and some decent points. A lot better than obviously race one earlier on. So yeah, good recovery from them. But Exeter, faultless drive. They didn't seem to be phased about what's going on around them. They just got the job done. Absolutely. Congratulations to... Those drivers that completely surprised us here in the commentary box and came off remarkably well out of that. Commiserations for me personally to the team from Hong Kong. I thought that was a great drive. Bit squiffy in places. Not sure whether Oxford will have something to say about it later down the line. But for me, just heartbreak for the team from Hong Kong. That was a great result. Or They were headed for one until disaster befell them somewhat unfortunately Southampton yet again not quite making it work is that going to jeopardize what should be a fairly concrete win on the horizon for them in the championship overall we'll find out we'll be able to bring you those preliminary results very very soon Jess what do you reckon then going into the final in a couple of months time Williams Esports who do you think is going to be going in as championship leaders? Is it going to be Glasgow, Bolton or Southampton? Well, it's not going to be Bolton. We know that. Um, I think because it was a 30 point gap, I think Southampton may have just snatched it by a whisker. But obviously I'll be doing the maths in the background. I, I, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but I think Southampton just got it by, by, by a whisker in my opinion. Exactly. It could well be that they still go in, but with a diminished lead. They were up by, I think, about 40 points. I don't expect them to have that if they do remain in the lead. That that that, but that buffer between them and their main rivals is going to be severely diminished, which makes it all the more exciting for us. But at the same time, I can't help thinking Southampton are going to be kicking themselves. We'll be able to find out very, very soon what the points look like at the end of that race. Remember, they will be preliminary results. And as Jess has said, chances are there will be a few appeals to the stewards and all I can say is thank God I'm not Monty and the team in the lobby yeah I'm kind of glad that we're just we're just commentating on the action really as well and I do remember the last time the protests were covered you did an Instagram story covering it all so if you are outside the former student discord and you want to find out the result, results of that protest Giles underscore Cosgrove has got you covered I do have you covered. I do have you covered. And suffice to say, I will try and cover you again because I've got a lovely insight into what goes on. And suffice to say, I sat there on my dinner just watching it all roll in on the Discord. <laughs> and um, it was better than anything that was on the telly. So there we are. And we'll be able to bring you our interview with none other than a team who have been on this stream before but have never actually won anything. We've been on by popular demand. And they'll be joining us very shortly. Exeter's winning driver from that second race will be here very, very soon. And that, so, that, that, those, are the rounds, those are the rounds over. The online rounds are now over, Giles, after we started in October 2023. I, know, I can't believe that. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? I mean, 
what are we going to fill our time with if there's no sim racing? We've got to wait two months now. I mean, it's just shy of a hundred days or so before we get to well, the Williams well, Esports. Well, they got we they got exams. They got exams, and some of the most of the teams they'll be concentrating on getting their real life Formula Student car ready for Silverstone mid July to hopefully exactly. get through scrutineering. And we'll be there as well. So we look forward to seeing you there. We also look forward to seeing you at Williams Esports. I've been told to plug it uh, multiple times and make sure that we do remind you that we will be at Williams Esports. I'm sure you're aware of it by this point. We are also being supported by them on the Sim Racing series. So just so you know, there we are. I can't get it right. There we are. Hey, see, see, nice big plug. There you go, Monty. I've plugged them for you. I've got a cap somewhere, but I can't seem go to on, find Jess. it. Oh, I can't. I can't find a Williams cap. But if not, I, it, it is signed, by the way, by two of the drivers. Cause I won a competition from them. But yeah, I, I, I will promise if I can find it, I will wear it at the Williams facility on 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 the on on, on the Tuesday. I, it's the first time I've actually been to Williams e, um, Esports facility, so oh, I'm really nothing. really excited. I mean, me being me, I'm just as excited about the catering as I am about the racing because the catering was spot on last time we went. <laughs> uh, I've got to ask, um, Exeter, you're very loud in the chat, but you're not very loud here in Discord and in the interview box for us. Could you kind of find your driver and send him our Get way, them in. please? So we've got a you know, issue with this one in that the driver doesn't have a microphone or a camera. So we are trying to use one of his teammates to uh, join us in the call so that they can then get a video call going so we can get the driver as well. So uh, bear with me another 60 seconds, guys, mm. and we will hopefully have an extra rep with us. I hope. Oh, dear. Um, Hashtag so students. <laughs> in response to some of the comments on the stream behind me is soundproofing material. I am in the studio at the Cardiff Student Media Office uh, because it's soundproofed and it hopefully means that you'll get some fairly decent audio out of me when the internet's playing ball. And it's certainly better than out where I live, which still runs on copper wires because apparently most of Wales hasn't heard of the internet um, yet. So there we are. And for those of you that are wondering where I am, I'm at home and this is not my real background. This is a virtual background because my room is in such a mess. So that that, 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 that is where I am at the moment as well. And uh, I've been in my bedroom for pretty much all the broadcasts so far. And it, and it still works well. So that, there we go. There we are. We're not exactly James Hunt and Murray Walker, but we're the best that the IMECI can find. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd encourage you not to ask them to look harder because they could probably find better, but <sighs> let's not question it. Hopefully, we will be bringing you someone from Exeter at some point, I imagine. I dread to think what's going to happen here because if you recall a couple of months ago, they were brought in here by popular demand and the stream went nuts and it has been nuts ever since. Um, we do have a question. We do have a question, which I, I, I could definitely say the answer to this. Will there be a live stream for the Williams final round? Of course oh, yes. there will be. Uh, uh, we will both be there. Monty will both be there. We, of course what? there will be a stream. There was a stream last time. I was watching it whilst I was at, well, whilst I was travelling to FS UK, and it it was great. But if you haven't seen it, guys, we will uh, stick a link shortly so you can see last year's live stream. You'll see it's a very special one because we kind of take over the whole of the uh, Williams Esports nice. facility, don't we, guys? Absolutely. And you give a tour, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> suffice to say, I'm just very much looking forward to having a co-commentator because to tell you the truth, I commentated for seven hours straight that day and I was absolutely exhausted. Meanwhile, Salvatore saying, just stating, Queen Mary Formula Student recovered 38 positions combined in race one and two and MTU recovered 35. Amazing fight and so much respect to them from the Queen Mary Formula Student driver. That's fantastic stuff. Really nice to see support from one team to another. That's what yeah, we love from a Formula Student. Um, can we get some more Pritchard action at the FS UK finals? I mean, hey, if you do well, then why not? If it's entirely down to you, we don't have a choice. And Arthur's asked when the street, the, the Williams Esports stream will be. Has the, uh, has the actual date been, uh, has the Tuesday of the FS week been confirmed, Monty? Say that question again. Sorry, Jess, I can't multitask. It, it, it is, it's the Williams Esports live finals. Is, is, it, is, is it confirmed to be on the 16th, 16th of, of July? July? Correct. Tuesday, the 16th of July. Just before At what the time? student kicks off. Uh, to be confirmed, it's going to be a full day event, so likely a 9-5 job. 
wonderful stuff so make sure you are available to join us whether that's in person or virtually meanwhile i believe we might have someone Drumroll. to join us in the commentary box i can see his face on the camera but he's not in the uh, interview room yet because he's not on discord yet if he's somewhere around there you'll see in case you're watching this on the live stream hop onto the formula student discord channel and you'll see there's a voice channel called interview room I would also like to point out, I have places to be, Exeter. I'm quite happy so to be So do I! But the, the patience can only go so far. I mean, put it this way. And we can only waffle about so much as well. Put it this way, he does have the Exeter haircut. He's, he, he's got the haircut you'd expect. It wouldn't be out of place on the Alps. Which, again, is what you'd expect for Exeter University. Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on, you're nearly there. You're nearly there, dude. I, I I can see you. I'm sending you the Discord messages in a DM now. That's the room I need you in. That's the room I need you in. Are you paying attention, Exeter? Follow Monty's instructions, please. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Daniel Letard says, I think we were all hoping for less protests than in Hungary. Might we all were. That far... He says, though, it might not be that far off. No, I don't think so. Yes, well, I hope for his sake he's uh, not correct because I would like to do something else with my spare time this month. But ah, 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 ah! ah we got, we got, we got it. I think we got. Have we got? Have we got, got, oh, we got, got sound? sound? I, I heard a Discord notification. I heard a Discord notification as well. Can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? We can hear yes, you. Yes. Can. Clear. yes. Awesome. But now we can't see him. Do you know what? Well. Well, We'll, we'll, we'll take... Okay, if we it's, got, it's, we got, we got him. It's a half right. win, it's a half win. So just to clarify, guys, this is not the driver from Exeter. This is one of... Uh, actually, I don't even know. Who are you? I've just been giving you a Discord <laughs> username. Are you even part of Exeter? I am. Wait, can you see my camera? Can't see your no, camera. No, we can't. No. But we can hear you loud and clear, dude. And we know you've got the floppy boy band hair going on. So you fit right into Exeter. So I'm assuming you are a member of Exeter Racing. This is going really well, Exeter. Nice and slick, guys. Well done. Yes. <laughs> all, all that gloating about being a Russell Group University and they can't even use Discord. There you go. Come oh, on. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. We, we have a person. Him. We can see him. Can we hear him? No, right now we, no, you're talking, buddy, but I'm afraid to say this. No sound. Right. Okay. One final time. So, put your microphone on mute on the camera. Or on that link I sent you, we only need your video to come through from that link. Your microphone comes through on Discord. Let's see if that works. Is that work? There we go! Yay! Beautiful, beautiful. Cool. We're there, can we're there. Can you hear me? Say again. Yeah, can you hear us? Oh, oh yeah, no, we lost the yeah. video! Do you know what? Let's take it. We got voice, Jess. Let's go with it. Let's just take the voice. Let's go with the voice. With let's go, let's go. I'm, I'm a, go, I'm a radio. I'm a radio man by trade. I'm more than happy to make this work. Very good evening. Thank you ever so much for joining us. I would love to know exactly who are you, please, because I don't believe you are the driver behind the wheel crossing the line for Exeter. Well, that's gone well, hasn't it? <laughs> I, 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 you, 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 your vision's on, buddy, but I'm afraid to say your sound is off. <sighs> oh my god, this thing. There we go, stay like that. Stay, stay like, that. like that. Whatever you've done there, just leave it. Okay. Don't touch anything. Alright, okay. cool. Um, yeah, How's so that? I'm Ike Barton. I raced in the first race. Okay. Uh, the guy who won the race is called Amy Stadbolt, and he is a very good sim racer, I'll say that. Um, we were doing hours of prep yesterday and today. Uh, he has got a whole Google Drive full of setups. And um, yeah, he's very professional. It's clearly so, clearly so. Now, you've been yo yoing between the top and bottom servers. Are we hoping going towards both the sim racing final this year and also going into next season? Are we hoping to see a bit more consistency from the Exeter Racing Sim team? Yeah, well, we've had quite a few driver um, swaps throughout the season. So it started off with like. Elliot, sorry, Jeremiah Elliot and Alex Pritchard at the start of the season. And then this race has been myself and Aiden. So quite a few drivers, but we could have the two biggest drivers, which are Alex Pritchard and Aiden. And um, yeah, we could see more consistency and lots of split one appearances. 
Right. Okay. So tonight, then, you've come through a great deal of traffic and teams that we've been seeing at the front have been down in the mid-pack, falling away. You've come good tonight. What was the reason behind the success? What do you think? swayed it for you to get that all-important win for Exeter, which is something I think you've been gunning for for a number of months. I think that, um, well, it's made out of a strategy, actually, uh, among other things, of course, but uh, me and Aiden were basically going around the practice ever earlier today and just trying to really make sure we get the right strategy. We filled up with a full tank of fuel and then refilled with about 23 litres. And so we had a four set stock um, in the race we won. As well as that, just the consistency, just the race pace. Um, myself and Aiden also do the uh, BUKC. So Aiden's also very good on that. He's got a win uh, in his rookie season. And that, I think, wow. just the practice and race craft just really That's helps. Fun. Yeah. So going forward into our, ra- our final, a bit difficult because I don't believe we actually tell you what you're going to be racing in until we get there. Is that correct, Monty? I know Monty's a bit busy. Monty's nodding his head. There we are. So it's all a bit of a mystery. There's not a lot of prep that you can do. So what is the plan going forward towards the Williams Esports final? I have no doubt Exeter will be there. I'd be shocked. Oh, you are going to be there, aren't you? Um, uh, our technical lead for some racing is called uh, 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 Dermot Elliott. So he'll be organising that, but I think we're going to be bringing five people. Um, ah. okay. all right, you might see me there. I don't know, it depends if I get chosen to go, but you definitely see Alex on the pictures there. I'm sure he'll be fast in. So you'll definitely see the university there? Yes, I think, yeah, we we will be there. But I can't speak on behalf of um, Grandma either. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be there. And how is the car looking? We've heard that the engine has had a 100% reliability rate during engine testing. But from what I can see on your social media stream, the engine isn't actually in the back of a car yet. There's two months to go. Are we confident that we'll actually see Exeter pass scrutineering and out on track? Um, so the engine obviously fired up. It sounds amazing. Uh, I'm not going to have a horsepower producing. That's probably uh, confidential. But um, of course. Yeah, it, it, it's running pretty well. Uh, we did have a few problems at the start because it not ran in like over a year. Uh, but basically we're just working the rear subframe at the moment and just trying to get it absolutely dialed in so, so it's up, as optimised as possible. But yeah, if we want to get the engine in it might literally take like a day, like a full day. So Has the engine actually run in anger with a load yet? No, not yet. Right. There's you, still uh, time. Well, they are a team that are very prolific on their social media so I imagine you'll be able to find it on their social media, you can keep up to date with Exeter's progress there. What is the Exeter tag, please, on socials? Uh, no clue. Um, I think it's just X Racing. It's I, I, it be on the I believe it is Capital, racing Exeter. Capital X Racing. Capital X Racing. So do go and find them on the socials. It's been a pleasure chatting to you, and very best of luck with the final. There is the representative from Exeter, Driver One, didn't actually win race too but suffice to say there's someone from Exeter here and it's been a pleasure chatting to them right with that in mind we can actually throw to our preliminary results in the sim racing series all to play for yes just about just about just about I'm uh, just having a quick discussion because the points aren't uh, what I was expecting Giles so uh, whilst I just wait for the okay. graphics to be updated let's go for one quick check of that provisional result in race two shall we uh, how long have you got left Giles you've got to be out of here in like three minutes haven't you I've got to be gone in about five minutes preferably because I've got a train to catch shortly cool right not a problem so uh, ba, 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 ba. sorry, just because I'm sending a couple of messages. Uh, Giles or Let's Jess, would one of you guys mind doing the honours for me, please? Let's have a look then. Let's have it. If you could move your thing there, Monty, so I can actually have a look at um, the, the names of the teams because I can't see them. There we are. Thank you. Thank you. As we've just been talking about, race winners were Exeter, University Glasgow in second. Very good result from them. They'll be very happy with that, keeping their championship hopes more than alive. 
NTU in third and fourth with his Polytechnic of Hong Kong. Didn't have a great result in the end, having led for a number of laps. In fifth, it is NTU. Sixth, it is Queen Mary, Formula student. Great recovery from them. Southampton in seventh. In eighth, it is Bolton. Have their championship hopes died off? Quite possibly. Staffordshire in ninth. Vigo in tenth. In eleventh, it was Cardiff. Not their best result. Even, even from tonight, let alone overall. They didn't win a race last time up, but they somehow run the overall event. Meanwhile, Oxford University take in 12th and 13th at his University College Dublin. Bath in 14th. Well, Trinity St. David with their lights on this time in 15th. In 16th, Hertfordshire. Monty's old stomping ground in 17th. The driving name I can't make out. What is that there, Monty? Uh, what, what, what position you is late. it, uh, There we go. It is... Aberdeen looks Scottish, I think. In 17th, was it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Aberdeen in 17th. In 18th, Manchester. 19th, FSTN. UBR in 20th. The Montfort University in 21st. Their spectacular regular driving, not quite paying off for them this time out. 22nd was Hull A. In 23rd, it's York A. Queen's Belfast in 24th. Victoria in 25th. And University of Strathclyde bringing up the rear in 26th. As you might have noticed, we are playing for time. We're trying to find out the preliminary results, and I'm clock watching because there's a train with my name on it, and I'd like to go home at some point. Uh, so suffice to say, it's been a very interesting evening. I'd love to hear from Southampton and exactly what their plans had been and where they went wrong, because I understand the thinking behind the strategy, but unfortunately and somewhat clearly, it didn't pay off. Your thoughts, please, Jess, on that one. Well, I, I just didn't get why they didn't have enough fuel because I thought they would have learned from the first time that they didn't have enough fuel to get to the end. Or maybe because of the amount of spins that they had, the spins does cost you in terms of fuel. So they may have they may have to work it out a bit more. But again, if they had because they, they, they had to put it again, they should have put it earlier. So it's a bit of a shame that they've lost a bit of time, unfortunately. You say this, you say this Jess. The more I think about it, the more I think actually a pit stop a single stop a single very short stop was intended for both because it nearly did pay off for them in the second race if it hadn't have been for the coming together with polytechnic of hong kong yeah they, they would they would have got a second yeah, if exactly if they hadn't have done that they would have had that additional 10 seconds they needed to get the jump on the other cars and i just can't help but wonder is it me then or were they just as a result of bad luck in the second race i think race two giles it wasn't just them getting involved in quite a lot of stuff many universities i think got caught up in chaos galore and i think i don't know why race, race, well, race one was all right even though there's a few bits of contact race two it was a bit hard of course i think there was a lot more risk involved because there were teams trying to find it out to score as many points as possible but you know it has generally been a good evening and um something that i think quite a few teams should be proud of and obviously queen mary who gained quite a few places already in race one and race two which just goes to show qualifying may not mean anything the race is where you get the points absolutely we've got the challenges now we've got the results now sorry for the engineering challenges and monty over to you please give us those results if you can Thank you guys. So, Engineering Challenge, it was Challenge 4 in between uh, Hungara Ring and this one, and it was a very, very close <laughs> one with Glasgow beating Southampton by a single point. In fact, they both scored the same amount of points in the judges' scoring. It was their ultimate lap time, which was in Glasgow's oh. favour, which gave them the extra point to win the challenge and the subsequent 50 championship points towards their overall tally. I smell a Glasgow steamroller beginning to start off again. Southampton, mm. though, fair play to them. That was by far their best engineering challenge as well. Some very, very creative details in there. Going to town on the aerodynamics as well as they created simulated aero maps for this challenge. The judges were thoroughly impressed with what they had to um, offer. And likewise, Dublin, Queen's Mary University, London and Strathclyde having a great shot showing off their engineering prowess again. But to be fair, fair play to Vigo, Hertfordshire, Cardiff, Bolton and Birmingham because they all got valuable points in this engineering challenge which will help towards their um, total uh, amount in the, uh, well, the final standings 
Glasgow have uh, been very, very impressive. I don't think they've... Oh, they have. They've won every single um, engineering challenge over the last two seasons. So, um, yeah, this was the closest they got to being beaten, but not quite yet. That's another 50 points for them. So, well done. But now, Giles, Jess, I have the uh, official results for the first round. You guys ready? The p provisional, of course, because... Oh, well, provisional, yes, you're quite right, but... Uh... Although having hurt... Getting your attitude, Monty, I can't help thinking you might be about to go on strike when it comes to complaints and penalties and just leave it as it is. Yeah, that's uh, kind of my attitude, but no, no, it's not. It's not that. I will do what is right for all the teams, so we will hold fire and see what happens for them all. But um, for now, the prov provisionally, results. here is how we end round six. Glasgow have won the round overall, a first and a second position, giving them 96 points in total. That's 20 points more than Southampton, which... They were definitely going for a gamble. They tried apparently, to do something clever. I've just, I've just seen on the stream, apparently a stop was always the plan. Grand Prix Alessio says pit stop was L plan for Southampton anyway. Well, in that case, this was thoroughly disappointing. I've not been this disappointed since uh, the first time I tried Heinz tomato soup, but that's an, an analogy for another day. Either way, well done, Southampton. You still got 76 points and a well-deserved second place in there. Bolton as well, managing to hold on to third position. You do feel the momentum is beginning to run out on their side there, but they're still there, and until the fat lady sings, it ain't over. Queen's Mary University London, stonking drives from the back of the grid. There they are, finishing fourth overall. They have a decimalised points because um, as part of their one-driver penalty, uh, they can only receive a certain percentage of their score for tonight, hence the 66.6. Uh, still fourth! Exactly. Stunning drive from them there. Cardiff still finishing fifth, joint with Vigo there. Hull in seventh and Exeter in eighth. I tell you what, Hull and Exeter will be kicking themselves given um, how competitive they were in that second race. Hull getting the DNF and Exeter were finishing last in race one. Ditto, to be fair, with Hong Kong Polytechnic University, star of the evening in my, uh, as far Agreed. as I'm concerned. Uh, wonderful to see them getting a pole position. Uh, if they had had two races like that, they would have been much further up the standings. But that is what that looks like. And when we combine the points of both of uh, round six results and the engineering challenge, here's how we're going into Williams in two months time, guys. Oh. Look at this. Southampton and Glasgow have broken away at the top. Southampton still in the lead, 12 points ahead of Glasgow. We've got to consider drop scores as well for the next round, so their worst result from the seven races will be deducted. So this is going to be interesting because Glasgow had an absolute howler in Interlagos. Southampton, I don't think they've really had what you'd call a howler no. of a weekend, so perhaps they're going to be penalised more with the drop scores. We're going to have to wait and see. Bolson still have a chance. There's still 50 points from the final engineering challenge, plus another 100 points once we're at Williams, so it's not over for them yet. We're just going to have to wait and see. But look at that. Dublin in fourth, Vigo still in fifth, and Cardiff in sixth. That is really, really tight, actually, between fourth and seventh position. Uh, it's just absolutely monumental for us here in the commentary box, because guess what? We've actually got a really exciting showdown to bring you from Williams Esports. So make sure you do join us. We'll have the dates confirmed for you and you can join us on YouTube. The live stream will be there. We've got the help of the gallery at the Williams Esports HQ. They were fantastic last year. I have no doubt they'll be excellent again. If you thought tonight's was fairly slick, I mean, hey, Monty's running it from his bedroom. He's doing an incredible job. We'll have a whole gallery to bring you the possibly the slickest coverage you've seen of anything ever. So do join us in July. It is a fantastic warm-up for the main event at Silverstone. I will be there. Jess will be there. Monty will be there. Southampton and Glasgow going in for a two-man duel for the win. The Formula Student Sim Racing 23-24. It all comes down to a whole day spent at the home of one of the most iconic Formula One teams of all time. So make sure you're there. And talking of making sure you're there, get your tickets now if you want to be at Silverstone for Formula Student. Tickets on sale now over on the IMEC website. But for now, I've been Giles Cosgrove. She's been Jess Ball. He's been James Monty Montgomery. And we will catch you very soon for the final of the Formula Student Sim Racing Series. Good night. <laughs>